This is an SM Media production. Hi everyone and welcome to this week's episode of The Sit Down right here on SM Media. I'm Scott McPay, delighted to be here again. This week I'm joined by the former Dundee, former Rangers, former Cardiff and former Aberdeen man and now the best Scots person living in Australia, Gavin Ray. Gavin, it's an absolute pleasure to be on, mate. Thanks very much for doing this. No worries. No worries at all. How are you doing? All right? I'm good, thank you. Good. Really good. What's been, what's been the situation over in Australia, like, with COVID? How's that been? Can we've I... been, to be honest, we've been very lucky here. Very lucky right. in Sydney. Um, Melbourne was really bad for a while, but on the whole, Australia's been very lucky. Um, you know, it's... it's no, I wouldn't say like normality, but it's not back to normality, but it's, it's not far off, to be honest. Right. Um, what's what's no. been kind of different over there? Like? Um, so we shut down a lot earlier than what the UK did. Like We right, shut okay. all the borders down really quick. Not really quickly, but quickly. Um, and that seemed to contain it. And I think because Australia is so big and it's such a vast place that you know we don't have the same... Um, condensed areas and saying that there's six million people in Sydney so yeah but it's across it's across a big big area you know so yeah it's um I think we've been lucky I think the government done well shutting down early um and got us back to normal quite quickly yeah. mm-hmm. and did you have plans to like come back to Scotland like for a visit at any point or? I was meant well, we were meant to be back in September so my sister-in-law was actually going to get married in Madrid right. Okay. So we planned to come back to the UK in August September time um and spend time between Scotland and We've got family in Manchester as well, so between the two places, and then fly to Madrid for my sister-in-law's wedding. Um, but they they postponed that for a year at least. So yeah. um, who knows when we'll get back? I mean, I was back in January, February last year, which was great. I'm glad I'm glad I got back then because yeah. I've no idea when's the next chance to get home. So um, it was good that just before COVID actually um, that we came back. So it was good that I got to see everyone then, but. Who knows when when we'll get back? But I'm be looking as soon as we can. I'll be looking to, to head home and see family for sure. What's it been like, like football wise? Like, have you been? Are you still involved in football in some way? Like over yeah, yeah, yeah. So since I came here, I've been involved in football. So I was when I first came, I was um, still playing like semi pro. It is so I was assistant coach and playing, and then so I've done that for two years, and then I was head coach and playing, and then I was just head coach. And I've been head coach for the last three years. So the six years I've been here, I've always been coaching. I've always been involved in football, um, playing still to an extent, and then just coaching. Um, and everyone got shut down with football as well for a while. But again, they managed to open up. And we actually had managed to get like a, a like a condensed season in. Yeah. Because um, we play March till August normally. Yeah. So we play over the winter months here. So it's like six months. And that was right and slap bang in the middle of COVID, but we mm-hmm. still managed to get like half a season. Yeah. Um, which was really enjoyable, actually. It was just great to get back out, get the boys training and get back playing. So it, was, it turned out really enjoyable. Brilliant. We'll start with your early years. Just talk about, about who you grew up. You grew up in Aberdeen, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, from Aberdeen. Um, grew up in Aberdeen about 10 minutes from Pataudry. Um When they were when Aberdeen, were obviously a really, really good team yeah. at that point. And obviously, through the 80s, I was... Born seventy seven, so you know, growing up in the eighties in, in Aberdeen was it was a good time for the club, and um, I suppose that's where the love love of football sort of stemmed from, you know. And did you support Aberdeen when you were growing up? I did, yeah, yeah. And I'm, as I say, I was ten minutes from the stadium. My dad yeah. just took to, to the games and stuff, and and at that point they were they were superb. So I didn't realize, you know, you didn't realize how lucky you are when you get mm-hmm. to see a team as good as that uh, week to week. You just think it's normal. Um, and it's obviously it's hard to sort of replicate what they've done there and obviously Sir Alex Ferguson being there as well and it's just it was a special time for the club and yeah I grew up supporting Aberdeen yeah. mm-hmm. and who were you kind of football heroes when you were growing up who did you kind of want to emulate um, oh, I liked the two I liked the two centre half so I liked big obviously big red big Alex right um, he signed me for, for Rangers which was you know ironic and obviously yeah. amazing Um and Willie Miller, you know, I liked to yeah. do two set halves. There were two well, stalwarts, you know, really solid players. But, you know, Willie Miller was, was a sensational player, just class, just oozed class and read the game so well. And I loved watching him. Is there any particular games you remember when you were growing up, like going to see? Um, 
I remember when they won the uh, the cup in Gothenburg in the '83 that we all got a day off school the next day. Did you? And yeah, everyone, every all the primary schools got a day off, so we were all at Patodji. Like Patodji was full the next day when they came yeah. back. So that's you know amazing memory. A day off school because the football team wins a cup. It's just like it's unheard of, and it was it was class. So being Real Madrid. Being Real Madrid, I mean, it's incredible. I remember people being out in the street when that happened and just not believing, you know, they'd managed to do it, which was, which was great, and um, just showed you, you know, what an achievement it was. Um, and then, you know, games. I was ball boy for the game that, unfortunately, Ian Durant got injured. Right. Okay. Um, I was ball boy for that game, and I've spoken to Durant about it a few times, and you know, that was a, a hell of a game, you know. For more one more than one thing, you know that tackle and and obviously the game and the atmosphere and we were I played for a local primary school who were doing really well, so we got asked to be ball boys for that game and um, just so happened to be that game and it was a you know as a memory of just sitting on the on the touchline just watching the game that atmosphere was amazing. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. And what were your kind of boys club days? Like, how, where did you kind of start off? Like, who were your who were the teams you kind of played for when you were starting out? Yeah. So I played for a team called Tilly Joan to start with, um, just a local boys club team based in a certain area. Um, and then we sort of amalgamated with another club called D-Side. D-Side were well-known, one of the sort of bigger clubs and bigger boys clubs. Um, and then we sort of flipped into another club, amalgamated with another one called Glen Tanner. Right. So it sort of went through three different phases. Um, but it was with the same, pretty much the same club all the way. Um, and yeah, it was, you know, had a, a manager that was proper tough on the boys, you know, got us really fit, we're proper fit. And I think that it stood, it stood me in good stead for my career, for sure, you know, um, the discipline and how hard he was on us. Um, and I, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. You know? mm-hmm. I mean, you, how did the kind of Dundee, can I, how did the Dundee hang come about? Like, was there any other clubs looking at you as well? I sort of, I'd sort of you know, I was probably a late developer compared to a lot of my peers. So, you know, I had lots of friends that were signed with lots of big clubs. Um, and I just didn't know if it was going to happen for me. And, you know, I was, as I say, a late, late developer. Um, oh, had always played, always done well in teams, but not really been a standout. Right. Um, and it wasn't towards the end, you know, starting around about 14, 15, as I got stronger and, and bigger, um, that I started to dominate games and, and people maybe were able to sort of see me standing out and, um, you know, raise some eyebrows sort of thing. So I'd, I was 15, maybe, 15, and myself and um, Jerry O'Driscoll, I don't know if you remember him, he played for Dundee as well. Right. So we were playing against each other in a in a boys' club game. So I was playing centre-back at that time, centre-half. He was playing striker. And there was a Dundee scout from Aberdeen. His name was Mike Will. Right. And... He had said to Jim Duffy, he says, um, listen, these two guys are playing against each other. These two guys have been talking about, why don't you come up and, and watch a game? So it was a cup final. And he actually, Duffy actually came up and watched the game, which is incredible when you think about it. You know, a first team manager. Because yeah. um, he was the first team manager at Dundee at the point. Came up and watched a, a boys club cup final up in Aberdeen to have a look at two kids. And that shows yeah. you, you know, the extent that managers go to to try yeah. and, and pick up talent. And... Um, in the in the lower clubs because they have to. Yeah. Um, so he came up. We both done really well, and and off the back of that, he, in, he invited us down to see the stadium at Dens and and, and sign basically. Um, so that was that was great. I went down and signed. Went took my family down, uh, or they took me down because I couldn't drive obviously. So we, we all drove down, um, and then yeah, he showed us about Dens and and I signed uh, YTS forms with the club pretty much that day. What age were you when you signed and what position did you start out at? So I'd, I'd have been about, I'd have been 15. Um, so I was in, I stayed on at high school for one more year, looking to do two years, but wasn't enjoying it. And it was like an opportunity to go full-time football. Yeah. I was like 100%. So I'd, have been, I'd been 15. Um, and at that point I was, a, I'd sort of flitted between centre-back and centre-mid. Mm-hmm. Um but most, mostly centre mid, but although in that cup final I was playing centre back at that point. Right, okay. And you said about Jim Duffy, just what was Jim Duffy like as a, a manager even in making a young days? Tough, very tough. Um, but good. You know, I've got nothing but respect for Duff and what he's done in football. He's still involved now, you know. That's a measure of how good he is as a coach and, 
and also with people, you know, he's always he was always good with people. He was, I think he's mellowed obviously as he got older, but yeah. he used to be proper tough. Like he'd really let you know when he wasn't happy, and you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't want to be in the receiving end of some of his some of his uh, team talk. You know, not doing well, but. As you know, I've worked with Duff a few times throughout my career, a few times, and still keep in touch now. But what yeah. I liked about Duff is he was just very straight. You know, yeah. he'd tell you, you know, he's tell you if you were rubbish, tell you if you were really good. And most players, that's all most players want. So you know, I've got, yeah, I had so much time for him, and he obviously gave me that chance. So um, yeah, I loved, I loved working with him. Mm-hmm. And YTS days, like a lot of players, like put from the kind of your, your period, can I talk about just how good they did as well? Like, what were your memories for YTS? I, 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 you know, 100% agree. It was, don't get me wrong, it was tough at times because, yeah. um, you know, you've, you've got to get used to a lot of different things, like coming in an environment where all these players from all over the country and, and you know, down England and that are coming up, trying to get, get professional contracts. So it's, it's yeah. cutthroat, it's dog eat dog. But it's also the the camaraderie between the the group. You know, you've got to you've got to find your place within that as well. You've also got the responsibilities of doing jobs and uh, cleaning dressing rooms, which yeah. they don't, they don't do anymore. But they should still try and install some discipline at some point, um, which is tough again because I'm leaving 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 home, never done anything for myself, and, and you know to go into that environment and being away from home, it was really tough. I really struggled the first year. Really struggled just to get my head around all that sort of stuff and put it together. Um, it was challenging for sure, yeah, really challenging. Mm-hmm. And do you think that kind of matured you as a player, like looking back, like just how hard how hard it was discipline-wise? Definitely. I think it matured me as, as a person as well. And yeah. I think that's I think that's what's the good thing about doing it, about mm-hmm. doing having to do the jobs and taking yeah. that respon- having that responsibility. Um, as I say, I left house, left the home, no responsibilities ever. You go into this environment where you're fighting for your job, fighting for your game, football, plus you're, you've got to be disciplined in, in what you're doing. Um, and it just makes just make you grow up really quickly. And as I say, it was really challenging to start with, but when you've done it and you get through it, you can prove that resilience to yourself. It stands in a good set of your career. You know, you, your career's up and down. I had so many ups and downs in my career, but, um, you know, just even tying it back to that and the stuff you go through, it's... It's stuff that you can't you can't uh, buy it. You have to sort of earn that respect and yeah. earn that um, resilience, and you do that. And the YTS jobs was, was definitely part of that. And uh, looking back on it, it's one of the best things I've done. It was really tough at the time, but yeah, great, great memories, you know. Yeah, and you made your debut. You could, you you do pretty well in the youth system. You made your debut at eighteen away to Hamilton. Just how was that feeling getting into the first team at a young age? Yeah, good. I mean, as I sort of said in the first year at YCS, I really struggled and it was a challenge. Right. Um, and then I, I didn't know whether I was going to get kept on and done well towards the end of the season. So they kept me on. They said, listen, go away and work on, I think it was head in, fitness, first touch, you know, the basic stuff. So I went away and worked really hard in the summer. And then, to be honest, the second year at YTS, it was like, I was like a different person, like yeah. confident, you know, comfortable in my own skin within that environment within the team and played every youth team game, all the reserve games, and then got a sniff at first team. So I was proper confident. Even going into that first team game at 18, I was I was ready for I felt I was ready for it. Yeah. Um and it was such a contrast to the year before, but that just shows you what happens when, you know, if you get a bit of confidence and a bit of backing from the people you need it from. Mm-hmm. And like as soon as like as soon as you come in at the first team, Jim Duffy goes to Hibs and then it was uh, John McCormick comes in. Like were you surprised when uh, Jim Duffy left, and what were your thoughts about John McCormick? I was gutted when Duff left because he'd obviously been really good and he'd obviously given my first team debut. Um, but I could understand why he left. You know, Hibs were in the Prem at that point. We wouldn't have been in the Premier League at that no. point. So, totally understand it. Gutted he yeah. left, of course, but yeah, no, I understand it. It was a strange one with John McCormick because Cowboy was my youth team manager right. and reserve team manager. And after the first year, absolutely loved me, and it was so. When he got it, I was thinking, "Oh, great! That's you know, I'm going to get hopefully get a chance." But he uh, he really bolstered his squad with experienced players, and I didn't really get a sniff. And I yeah. and I got it, you know, but it was hard, quite hard to get my head around, and um, something hard to deal with when I was a young player. Um, 
so yeah, we never really, I never really got a chance under Cowboy really uh, in the first team, and I totally understand it and respect his his choices and, and the players he signed because they were good players. But um, I thought I'd have got more of a chance, but I didn't, and it was it was tough to take. Yeah, did you nearly move to Beacon that season as well? Very close, yeah, very close. So what happened was, like you said, I wasn't getting a sniff, wasn't getting a look in, and then sort of seen Cowboy a couple of times and said like what do I need to do or I'm in your plans and I wasn't in his plans basically. Right. It was that it was that clear and that was fine. You know, I was I was gutted, but yeah, so I was very close to moving. It was pretty much a deal was done. Um and I'd sort of accepted I was going to drop out of full time football. Wanted to go and get games, um, but I would have to go and get a job as 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 well. And I'd sort of made peace with that and I was open to it and I'm just going to crack on with it. I'm glad, obviously, it didn't come to that. But um, yeah. what happened was he, John McCormack actually ended up getting getting the sack. Yeah, like pretty much. I think it was a week or two after that, or maybe a week or around about that time, which was very strange because we were top of the league and doing well. But I think he'd had a fallout with the board or or something. I, I'm not sure the full details. Right. Um, but that allowed me to stay. Um, and I just, you know, if you look through back through your career, you know, in, in terms of times when a sliding door moment, and that was definitely one of them. That it could yeah. have went either way, and, and luckily for me, it turned out turned out all right. But I was very close to leaving. Yeah, I would yeah. played for Brook in, in the Youth Cup before going to Dundee. All right, so okay. That was a, so I'd been playing in the uh, Scottish Youth Cup for Brook and done very well. And that's how I, that was another reason that Dundee wanted to take me. So um, that was the connection with going back to Brook and a great club, and I was open to it, like I say. But um, you know, luckily I managed to stay full time. Yeah, it was Jockey Scott that came in and he gave you a big opportunity. Like, how much do you kind of hold Jockey Scott in the regard, like, for basically giving you a chance? Oh, it was massive, yeah. It was like career saving, like I said, at that time. It was, yeah. it was huge. And he was very, he was very clear, you know, just like everyone clean slate and he, he was true to his word. I'd played a couple of practice matches when he came in because so, he was obviously looking at all the players and he knew, every, he knew everyone, but he was wanting to see everyone, you know, with his own eyes. And I'd done very well in these games. Maybe just got a bit of a, you know, a second chance and a bit of second win for myself. So I um I done well and and then, you know, in and out. Once he came in that end of that season, I was sort of in and out, not not playing too much. And then we went, we got promotion and then this promotion year of um, after the first little bit wasn't really in. And then once I got in, I was in the whole season. So yeah, um, I played a lot of games for him and it was it was great times. I loved it. it was great. Brilliant. And the, uh, you get promotion that season and go up to the, the newly formed Scottish Premier League. Like, what were your feelings going up to the kind of big time, basically? It was, it was enjoyable. You know, as I said, I didn't play too much in the promotion season that year. I played a couple of games and, um, you know, I didn't feel really like I'd earned much of that promotion, but I was delighted to be part of the squad. Um, and then coming into the new season, like, again, Jockey buys new players and takes new players in because we're going up a level. Yeah. Um, just, just thinking, just want to be part of it, I want to be in and around the team. Um, and, you know, luckily, as I say, got a chance and, and sort of took it and then and, and played a lot of games that year, which was was good. It was, you know, as I say, I was confident at that age and, and felt felt like I belonged. I, I actually felt the Premier League suited me better because it, was, it wasn't as like, it was still fast, but it wasn't as fast as maybe the championship and you were allowed to play right. football more. Yeah, um, and I felt like, wow, oh, this is—I'm you know, really enjoying the like, sort of a little bit more time on the ball, and um, it sort of felt like that suited me better. And um, yeah, it went really well. And, and Jockey and, and Jimmy Bowen as assistant, and and the group that they they um, built along with what Cowboy had built was a was a solid group and a, a great um, you know dressing room to be part of. Yeah, who were the good kind of characters in the dressing room like? Oh, we had Ed Yannon, James Grady was great, big big Rab had obviously came to the club, Rab Douglas, Barry Smith was our captain, you know, we had um, Dave Rogers, Brian Irvin, you know, we had a great, great squad, great uh, bunch of bunch of boys and, um, you know, really enjoyable to be part of and the training and stuff with them was, was great, great fun. Yeah, just I want, one thing I want to kind of touch on, do you remember the kind of rumours about the, the merger with Dundee United? Like, do you remember what kind of happened there? I can remember there were always rumours going about, and I remember it was pretty, you know, there was a lot of rumours around about that point, but, you know, as players, you don't really see too much, and you can't read too much into it, you know, so much yeah. stuff in the press, you just got to sort of let it brush over you. Um, but there were certainly lots of rumours at that point, and players maybe talked about it, but, you know, until something happens, you don't really, 
you don't really want to say what's going to happen, you know. Yeah, and that was a great season for the Dundee. First season up, they finished fifth. That was the highest league position in 23 years. Look, what were your kind of memories for that first season up in the Premier League? It was great. You know, it's, it's one of them that you go into the season, there's, there's not really that much pressure because everyone expects you to go down. Yeah. We obviously, you, you see it all the time. You, you see a team that gets into a winning habit. And we'd done that the year before and, and obviously got promotion. So you see them when they come up to the, the next league. Um, we've still got that belief and confidence. And we just, we had a blast. It was amazing fun. Um, as I say, there was no pressure. We could go and enjoy ourselves and express ourselves and, and show people we were good players and a good team. And it was uh, it was one of the most enjoyable seasons I've probably had in my, in my career just because there was no pressure and it was just go and enjoy it and, and show people what you're all about. And, and obviously we've done really, really well and, and finished high. Brilliant. The season after, you start the season really well again, but the, the one that'll probably, the game that will stick out in your mind was the game at Ibrox where you scored a win on injury time. Was that kind of one of your best moments of your career up until that point? Uh, definitely, uh, sure, you know, you know, I was just a young kid, you know, playing and even getting to play at Parkhead and Ibrox, you know, yeah. amazing, amazing as a kid, you're just growing up and thinking, yeah, getting to actually play football as a, as a job and um, it was, as I say, that, at that age, you're just, you're just enjoying it and enjoying the life and, uh, and having fun and yeah, to get, um, to manage to get the winner for a club like Dundee away at Ibrox. Um, was special. It was my twenty second birthday that day, so it was uh, it was all sort of tied into one, and it was uh, great memories. Great memories. Yeah. And did that kind of cement your popularity with the fans? Just scoring a goal like that. I think so. You know, and to be honest, you know, I'm never, I'm never going to be. A, I was never a player that was going to be like, a, you know, a fan's favourite. You know, I'm not like right. silky. You know, I'm not rapid, quick. Um, I'm one that's you know, really valuable, I feel, for the team. Um, and always hard working. You know, yeah. I think the fans enjoy that. Um, but, you know, to be able to get a few goals as well from midfield, it sort of, you know, people were starting to take notice because I could score. You know, I normally get about five or six at least from midfield every yeah. season. Um, so it was pretty consistently getting goals. Not huge numbers, but getting goals from midfield. So that sort of separates you as well. So, um yeah, it was, uh, you know, coming through the youth team and, and playing for Dundee and, and getting to you score away Ibrox and a winner was, you know, amazing. Probably, I don't remember the last time they'd done that before that, but, you know, it was, it was a, certainly a good, good history. Yeah, and as well as that, like, how important is it really like, to, to be, like, hard work and how important is it in a team like Dundee who, like, in a league like the Premier League, they're not expected to do an awful lot, but how important is it just for the team to kind of work hard and get can I get results mainly through like hard graft? Yeah, I mean, I think it's the basis of any good team. Um, yeah. You know, you you notice you play to your strengths. You know, my strengths were I was really fit, um, strong, uh, could read the game, and was part of a, a unit that operated really well. And um, you know, we had the player players. We had players that could score. Yeah. And my job was to back back them up work really hard for the team, be the heartbeat of the team, um, you know, both offensively and defensively and, and help defence, help attack and just be all over the park and make myself really difficult to play against. And I'm sure players at that point when I was, you know, that young age and, and playing against, you know, midfielders, opposition midfielders, we never liked playing against me just because I was that sort of all action. As I say, not particularly skillful or uh, glamorous yeah. on the eye, but... Uh, industrious, you know, and, and, and certainly uh, worked hard for whatever team I played for. Mm -hmm. And uh, that season, you finished seventh in the following season. Ivano Benetti comes in. Like, what was, when did you first hear the name Ivano Benetti? It wasn't, you know what, it wasn't towards the end, until the end, of, towards the end of the season, it, was, it wasn't like, it wasn't huge rumours. Um, but certainly towards the end, it could certainly see it coming. It was, there was a lot more rumours and then he, he started attending a couple of games, I think. Yeah. Um, before he'd even been appointed. So that was, okay, it was, you know, when you're younger in football, you don't realise how quickly things can change and managers can change. So I was gutted to see Jockey go, but, yeah. you know, interesting to see what Ivano had. Yeah, did you feel like Jockey had done well in his time there? He'd done unbelievable if you think yeah. about it. You know, promotion, well, finished up with a promotion from Cowboy, who'd done well. Um, and then we finished fifth and then finished seventh. So 
you know, for a team like Dundee, that's that's not not bad, you know. Mm-hmm. And obviously, like, it was the the guy, the Stefano, was he kind of the reason of the net to get appointed? Obviously. Yeah, to be honest, I don't know what was going on behind the scenes at the club, but um, it was uh, yeah, it was certainly interesting times, and it was a new it was a new thing, and yeah. It was, Again, as I say, when I was younger, it was just I was looking forward to it. I knew it was going to be tough, but looking forward to see what else was out there. Mm-hmm. And what was the kind of reaction in the dressing room when the news of Benetti coming in? Just a bit of, a bit of disbelief to start with because Jockey was going after doing yeah. so well. Um, and you know, a bit of realisation probably from players knowing that it was going to be a totally different regime. Yeah. Um, which is understandable, you know, if people change. Change dressing room, that's fine. But we, we, as I say, we'd had a really good tight knit dressing room. It was great fun, and it was gotten to see that sort of come to an end. Yeah. But you know, the evolution in football it happens happens quickly, so we just had to go on with it. Mm-hmm. And were you surprised with the kind of players that were coming in, like the likes of them, Zadze, Caballero, Juan, Sara? Like, how how surprised were you when you heard the kind of names coming in? Well, very surprised because to be honest, I didn't know who they were. Yeah. Uh, so we've obviously seen a lot of foreign boys coming in, and you know. Really realizing quite quickly, you know, how good the players were because you see them on the training ground. You're like, wow! I mean, they're top top players. So it was uh, it was good in that part that you get to play with players like that. Um, but yeah, no, it was uh, it was amazing that the club could sign so many different players. Yeah, and see when a foreign manager comes in, do you worry like as a local player? Like, do you worry about your place because he's bringing in so many like kind of players he knows? Oh, without a doubt, yeah, without a doubt, yeah, and definitely, and that's. I think any time a manager changes, any time it changes over management, you're always thinking it's oh, back to the start. And yeah. it can work for you, it can work against you. Like I say, it worked for me when Cowboy went, mm-hmm. uh, but it can work against you as well if there's a manager that likes you that leaves as well. So that's football. Um, you've got to be sort of open minded to it and just go on with it. And it was, um, yeah, it was certainly going to be a totally new re- regime with him. Um, but as I say, you've got to go into open mindedly. Yeah. And did you did you feel we took a shine to you straight away? Nah, not in the slightest. Nah, I mean I was well out of the team when he first came. Like it was, right. it was really tough to be honest. It was, um, I think the year before I'd played every single Premier League game apart from one, um, full ninety minutes every single Premier League game. So I thought, you know, I'm in a decent enough place. Yeah. But then we went pre-season, and you know, I was like. It was like an unknown. Like, you didn't even know who I was. It right. was one of them, you know. Yeah. So it was like, oh, okay, here we go. <laughs> it's like this again, is it? So, again, you're fighting to, to win a, a manager and a coach over. He's got his own idea about players that he's bringing in and he's going to play them, which is fine, get it. Um, but tough to take because I'd put a lot of, you know, hours and games into the year before. So I was gutted that it, it was coming to that challenge, but um, I had to accept it quickly and move on. Mm-hmm. And... Another player he brings, uh, Benetti brings in, uh, Claudio Carigia. What was the reaction when, like, that's just a guy who's playing the World Cup final. What was the reaction when a player like that signing for Dundee? Ah, to be honest, it was disbelief when there was the rumours with, with Carigia. He was one that was like total disbelief that he's actually coming. Until he, until he rocked up and he came, came training and we we're just like, wow, like it's actually sort of happening. Yeah. Um, just remember, you know, he's a very, very chilled out guy. Didn't didn't do that much at training, but you see him in a game, you know, just like I mean, he was sensational. He's he's, he's the best player I've ever played with. Has he? You know, I've been, I mean, you know, I've been very lucky to play obviously with a lot, a lot of top top players. Yeah, I still think he's, he's the best player I've ever played with. He's the one that I've just looked at and just thought, like, wow, what Aye. a player he is. You know, just like take your breath away, how good he was, and. I'd have loved to have seen him in his prime. You know, he was yeah. 33 when he joined Dundee and obviously older when he went to Rangers. So, yeah. and he's still done brilliant. So, he, you know, I t- couldn't imagine him when he was like in his prime at 24, 25, 26. He must have been sensational. And was he a character as well like, in the dressing room? He's quite quiet, really quiet guy. Chilled out guy, yeah. You know, he used to take his, his kids to training and he would just take it easy and train, just jump in, uh, sort of come in and do the training little bits here and there and then he would drop out and sort of looked after his, himself and his own body. Still in magnificent shape. Um, yeah. Proper athlete. But knew, knew how to look after himself and he was very, very chilled out. Lovely guy but really chilled out. Yeah. And what you do pretty well. You start kind of scoring goals and when you can enjoy, we enjoy playing under Benetti when you kind of got a good run. Once I got back into the team it was 
like the actual matches were probably the most enjoyable f- of my career. Yeah. Because the players we had and the way we were playing, um, the football we were playing and the, and the results, it wasn't every week, you know, it was up and down week to week, but it was, it was so much fun because we had so many good players. You know, I struck up a good, really good relationship with Georgie and Zadzi in the middle. Mm-hmm. Um, and we had Barry Smith behind us who yeah. gave us a protection. So me and Georgie could just go. Um, and then obviously playing with Kinesia. I actually stuck up a really good sort of link-up play with Kinesia. Um, so I loved playing with him because he was so intelligent as a football player and he was, he was obviously so good. So, yeah, it was, it was super enjoyable times. The games were amazing. I'm sure the fans would say the same things. Yeah. It was so entertaining. Um, and, you know, it wasn't a struggle week to week. It was proper entertaining football. So I loved being part of it once I got, way, got my way back into the team. And, you know, Ivano, after a tough start, did end up loving me. And he was, he was great with me. And I really enjoyed, you know, learning from him and his brother, Dario. Yeah. And during this time, you get your first Scotland cap against Poland. Like, just talk us through the memories of, of how that came about. Yeah, so there was rumours, you know, that, it was, that Chris Brown was going to sort of call up a few of the younger boys, you know, to start blooding the younger ones in the team. Um, and we had, the game was in Poland. Uh, and I'd been playing really well and scoring a few goals and um, got the call. And he, he well, I, think, I can't remember who it was that told me. I don't know if it was Ivano or the club secretary that told me that there was a letter for me and I'd been called up and... You know, I played under 21s, which got under 21s, which I absolutely adored playing yeah. for Scotland. Um, so now to have the chance to go and play for the for the first team was, you know, amazing. Especially at 23, you know, I was I was regular playing regular in the Premier League, but you know, um, to get the opportunity to play in that game was was brilliant. And obviously, started the game and um, I think it was one one with Poland or one now. I can't remember, but yeah, we played over in Poland. So just the whole being part of that was. You know, it's something. It's the pinnacle for me is playing for my country. Yeah. Um, so that was yeah to be able to do it at twenty three was good. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. And on to like the the kind of end of that season, the two kind of results will stick out. He's one two now with Ivox and Parkhead. Like, were they? How good was that team to just go there and one two now, both at both stadiums? Yeah. No, really good. I mean, we as I say, we had a we had a really good team. Um, the game at Ibrox, I remember Kanicha scored one and then Stevie Milne scored the second one late on. It's probably one of the best games I've played in my career where, right. you know, at Ibrox, on top of my game, you know, playing against top players and not only, like, holding my own, I felt, but actually starting to dominate the game a bit. Um, so that was a measure for me to, to see that, that I could do it at that level. Yeah. So really, really good at that. Good fun, enjoyable. Um and then obviously to go and do it at Parkhead uh, towards the end of the season as well. I think we've been unbeaten at home as well, set like so. It was, um, yeah, it was uh, obviously just a marker team that we had. Good, good players. And just as well as that, like, been, like who were the kind of good players you come up against? Like playing with Dundee, like who were the kind of best players you come up against during that time? Oof, I mean, we used to have some yeah really tough games, obviously against Rangers and set like Van Bronckhorst, Alberts. Obviously, Barry Ferguson was a sensational player. Um, on the other side, obviously, Lennon. Uh, Charlie Miller was at Dundee United, maybe, at that point. Yeah. You know, some, some top, top players I played against and, and challenging. And Denny McInnes was up there as well. You know, there were some really, really good players. But um, I think played one of the toughest opponents I've ever had, ever, was two guy when he was at Rangers. Right, OK. Oh, my goodness. Couldn't, could not get near him one night. I think we had a game live on Sky and it was sick nil at half time. Man. It was uh I, I remember that. It was disgusting. That was disgusting. Eh? Um yeah. Brilliant. But uh the following season, uh Kinija obviously goes to Rangers. Like, were you surprised that he was leaving so quickly? Or did you think he was just he was always gonna go? Honest, I wasn't surprised at all. <laughs> he was so he was good. I mean, I think the other clubs in the division must have just been thinking like Wow, we need to get a hold of him because he's yeah. sensational. You know, he's such a good player. Yeah. Um. And I wasn't surprised to see him go. I was gutted to see him go. Yeah. But obviously, fair play to him because he more than deserved it. Mm-hmm. And a player that comes in that season was a uh, Tamura Kitsbaya. What was he like? Just a maniac. He, you know, how he used to call him the volcano because he would he would actually erupt just so quickly, <laughs> just like 
Great guy, great, yeah. unbelievable player, great guy, the guy, really friendly within the group. But then something would just spark him in training, and he would just like, just go. He was just like, wow, you know, like relax. But um, nah, good guy. He's a top top player. Mm-hmm. And that, like obviously, like John, obviously you play in that Dundee derby. Just how intense is that game? Ah, uh, very intense. You know, it's a, it's not a huge city. Um, obviously, the two stadiums have been really close together. It's uh, it's proper intense. You know, I played in a good few of them. Um, great occasions, and yeah, the rivalry is it's big. You know, it's it's big. It's obviously there's other derbies I've played in that are bigger, but it's it's still a momentous occasion for the clubs. Um, there was a lot of years when they were in separate divisions, so when they do come about mm-hmm. uh, within the league, it's it's a it's a big occasion and uh, something to savour. Mm-hmm. And just a wee, a wee thing I want to touch on as well that I heard in an interview recently you done you talked about how good a player Lee Wilkie was and I was all I always kind of agreed with that just like injuries just kind of affected him like how good was he to play play behind play in front of sorry big, yeah no big Lee you know I'd been playing so I, when I was playing youth team and then playing reserves he actually came and played a couple of reserve games so I'd have been about I don't know maybe 17 and he came and played centre half with me when he was about he must have been about 14 or 15 mm-hmm. and he was as big as he was, you know, tall, and he was yeah. just like, I mean, um, and he developed, what, what Lee, what big, we call him Big Streaky, that was his nickname, um, <laughs> big, big Streaky's, you know, he had so many attributes, he was obviously, he had the, the physical attributes, he was so, so tall, he became really strong, he was quick enough, and yeah. he was such a good football, footballer, you know, mm-hmm. very good footballer, he could, you know, he could switch play, he could dribble with it, he was like a modern day centre half before yeah. his time. Yeah. And had a lot of bad injuries, unfortunately. But, you know, I've seen him playing for Scotland, played with him for Scotland and coming up against some top top players. And he would, he would you know, be able to boss them and, and certainly go toe to toe with them. And he was, a, he was a very, very good player, Lee. And uh, unfortunately, had a really couple of bad injuries that curtailed his career. Yeah, do you think he would have moved on to like a bigger, bigger level if he'd obviously been more lucky with injuries? Hundred percent, as yeah. I say, he, he he had everything. He had everything. He had the physicality, he had the speed. He, he could play, uh, read the game, and defend. Love defending. You know, you get defenders that like to look good, but he proper loved defending. He had, he was the complete package, and it was a really shame, a shame what happened to him. And last season, he's finished ninth. It was a pretty solid season, but uh, Benaya gets sacked. Were you surprised when he gets sacked? Not. Not to tell me actually when it did actually happen because there'd been a lot of sort of rumblings within the the club and I think the board and the management had sort of fell out about numerous things. You know, the, the Benetis were quite demanding um, in what they wanted. Um, spent a lot of money on players. Spent a lot of money making us be as professional as possible. You know, we'd yeah. go away to hotels the night before games and stuff um, to try to do things right, So, which was great. Um, but obviously came come at a cost, and then we were when we were getting like results that were sort of up and down, you know, getting some great results, getting some sort of poor results. Yeah. Um. Obviously, the pressure mounts from that, so I could sort of see the cracks coming. Um. So I wasn't surprised when it happened, but um, you know, there was there was a big lead up to that, I think. Mm-hmm. And just like when Jim Duffy comes back, like were you just delighted, like if Andy was coming back and that was the person you wanted? Oh, I was delighted. Just it's. It's difficult when you don't know someone, you know, when they come in and it's a clean slate. I mean, he knew what we were all about. Yeah. He knew most of the squad. It was absolutely ideal. It was ideal for me. I was delighted he came back in because he knew my strengths, you know. Um, he knew what I could do. I knew what he could do. And it was, I was delighted when he came back. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. And just like, obviously, at this time, kind of Dundee, you can hear the kind of rumours about Dundee but financially they're struggling. But when do you first kind of get worried that things are only going on very well behind the scenes? Just when it was, just when it was so constant, you know, right. you, you get rumours now and again, but it was like constant, constant, you know, rumblings behind the scenes and in the press, and you speaking to people and you're saying this and that. And when it's as constant as that, you know, you're thinking, oh, there's, there's definitely something there. Um, to the extent of what it was, we didn't know, but yeah. you certainly hear, you certainly think there's. There's something, there's something there, but as I say, we didn't know to the extent of how bad it was. 
The 2002-2003 yes. season, you finished six. It's a, another great season, like top six for Dundee. But the game that you'll probably remember more than anything was the Scottish Cup final against Rangers. What was the memories of that day? Because I think you'll agree with me. Probably Dundee will feel hard done by not to win that game. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. You know, look back on my career, and that's it's definitely a regret. Yeah, because um, we played well on the day. You know, for me, it was it was the occasion. You know, getting to play. You know, growing up in Scotland, watching the Scottish Cup final every year, and then getting to play in one is a massive honour. Yeah, uh, something is something to savour. But you know, it wasn't just that. I wanted to go. We wanted to go and win, of course. Yeah, I can remember it being a boiling hot day, and um, you know, having many bus full of your family coming down from Aberdeen to, to the game and just as I say it's an occasion to savour and, and have really proud memories of but frustration in the result because we played well enough on the day to win um, yeah. couldn't get the goal and, and lost the goal at a set piece and that's what good teams do they find a way to win and uh, Rangers done that but just a great day just to be playing in a Scottish Cup final and coming out at Hamlet yeah, massive yeah massive yeah. I mean, it was huge very you know Proud moment for my career, and as I say, watching these games growing up, to to be able to say, you know, I played with a team that got to do that and, and got to that level, and uh, people watching that game, watching me playing, is just amazing. amazing. Yeah, brilliant. That was your kind of last full season with Dundee, and obviously, like the season after, you get the big move. But uh, the game I want to touch on was a game when you played with Scotland. Obviously, the the second leg of the set, the second leg of the Euro two thousand four playoff against Holland. Just talk us through that game and obviously the scoreline kind of didn't doesn't look well. But how big a how big a game was that yeah. and how how hard was was it to come up against who they were they had in their team? Uh, a huge, huge game and um it was a hard one. You know, I'd had an, I think on the Saturday, because we'd done so well and you know, we'd beat them, I think we probably made them angry, you know, and thinking you know, we were confident, but they were probably thinking They've actually beat us. We're actually going to smash them out. And it was just like, you know, you come into the game. I didn't play on the Saturday. I wasn't even on the bench on the Saturday yeah, because right, yeah. I'd, I'd had a hamstring strain. Yeah. But then Christian Daly gets booked in the in the in the first leg, and that means he's out for the second leg. So yeah. Bertie revoked. Was like, listen, we're going to need you. And can you, you know, how's it feeling? And it felt fine. You know, you, I trained the Saturday, trained the Sunday, trained the Monday. Um, you know, so he says, listen, if you, if you train, if you come through the training, you'll play. Come through the training, felt fine. Um, and then so, obviously, delighted to get the chance to go and, go and play, thinking we're going to do well, um, and quite quickly realising how tough a night it was going to be. And as I say, I think we got them angry, and they showed all their sort of prowess that night, and, and wow, was it a tough night. And the worst of it was, I think we're 3-0 down after about 15, 20 minutes. Aye. And my injury that I'd had, the hamstring, I felt it go when I was chasing Davids about, but I was just thinking, I can't come off, man. I mean, it's, you know, down that was going to look terrible, so sort of struggled through at half time, and then it started easing off a bit, but it was a, it was a horrible night, horrible game to be involved in. But uh, in the way home, you can, uh, the rumours become real, as Dundee got into administration, like what was, what were the thoughts of that, like just heartbreak? Yeah, it was it was as I say a really tough night. So we had the had the game, and then you know when you speak to the press, obviously speaking about the, the game was tough enough. And then one of the press guys, I can't remember who it was, told me, "No, it's been confirmed that Dundee went in administration." So it turned out to be a horrible night. So you've got the yeah. the result and the country being devastated with the result, and then flying back to Dundee, not knowing what's happening. Um, you know, you arrive back three, four o'clock in the morning and then you're back in the stadium early doors to get the news um, confirmed to you. It was a horrible 24 hours. It was amazing. And just how crazy was that situation with Dundee like, going into ad- administration? Was there any kind of stories you remember about just how bad it was? Yeah, it was just, again, something foreign to us. We, you know, we're football players. We didn't know anything about the sort of business side of it and also the ramifications of it. We didn't know how bad it was going to be and, um, you know, I think it took a while for it to sink in just how bad it was. Yeah. Um, yeah. So basically, we just got called into a room and um, told that you know the club was in, in, in administration. That we're going to be have the players going to leave that day. Contracts cancelled. You know, you know, get a call. 
pick up your boots, you're gone, basically, which is yeah. outrageous when you think about it. Crazy. It's incredible that they can just do that, but it's uh, it's it's what it is, and we went through it, and it was uh, it was tough. You know, I'd been with certain players for for years, but that day just got told their contracts were finished and they were done with the club, which is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. But um, due to mismanagement of the club, it's it's where we were, and it was it was horrible. Mm-hmm. And who was like? Did you ever have any kind of interactions with this Stefano? Was he was he the guy that he was a guy who's like claimed he represented? Was it Harold Chapman? Is that right? Was he just he was just crazy, wasn't he? Ah. Crazy, I think he had some, you know, pretty colourful background, and um, yeah, it certainly didn't work work with the club. Um, with it, so it was him and the Mars were involved. Yeah, at board level at that point as well, and you know, I think they'd been sold this dream from you know another couple of models in Europe, where you buy players, you know, lower sort of level foreign players and get them to play, and then you sell them. Yeah. But I think the market, the transfer market crashed as well. So the whole yeah. model day one just was going to be very difficult to sort of follow through on, and and it improved that way, and it become obviously untenable for or unsustainable for the club. And yeah, it was um, as I say, it was a horrible, horrible time. Yeah, and obviously, like when you've been doing really well, when obviously a Scot- playing for Scotland, did you always did you always feel during that time you would get a move? Um. I think I was confident enough that I was going to get a move at some point. I was ready to move. You know, I'd been at Dundee for a, eight years at that point. So two yeah. years YT, I think, and six years pro. So I've been playing, you know, year in, year out for, for the club and probably ready to move at that point in my career. But, you know, there's nothing concrete. There was a few few things flying about, but nothing concrete. But I was confident I'd, I'd get something. Yeah. And then, like, Rangers obviously came in with a couple of bids. Like, the one they kind of were a, a bit below par. Like, did you, were you finally glad when the deal kind of got done? And what was it, how did that, how did it come about? When did you first see the Rangers' interest? I, um, I heard about their interest, you know, a while before it sort of went through. And Alan McLeish had told my agent that he was going to come and, and try and get us. And, and then I, I knew when it was, it was very close to happening when Alex called me. Yeah. And he says, listen, we're going to get this done, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, long as the medicals are okay, um, yeah, you, you know, you keen to come and I was like, yeah, hundred, of course, yeah, without a doubt, yeah, mm-hmm. of course, I'm ready for it. Um, so it's been back and forth for a while, but yeah, just obviously delighted to get it done, and um, it worked out well for the club because the club got a bit of money. You know, it worked out well for me because obviously I got a, an amazing move to a yeah. big club. Um, unfortunately, it didn't work out in terms of the actual move the longevity of it, but. You know, it's, that's that's football and what happens. But um, you know, I'm delighted to get it done and get an opportunity like that. Yeah. See, just when you say that, though, like, see, when you're having the medical, like, obviously, you'd said yeah. that you, you felt the hamstring go, kind of going, and you kind of felt it going when you were at Dundee, like the last kind of few games yeah. you played. Were you worried about yeah. the medical with with the hamstring? Not really. No. You know what? It's 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 strange. Like before I joined, before I went to Rangers, I'd never. You know, before I'd done the medical at Rangers, I'd never had one MRI in my life. Right, okay. You know, I'd never done an MRI, never done a scan. I'd never had any ligament damage, any knee damage, any, you know, ankle damage. Always soft. I'd had a couple of soft tissue injuries with hamstrings, but nothing like that kept me out for that long. So I was confident. You know, I'd never, I'd never missed many games. I'd played pretty much every game for like 10 years, so I was never really yeah. that bothered. I was never really thinking of it negatively. No, I'd, I'd confident I was going to get it done because, as I say, I was I was fully fit apart from a a slight sort of hamstring issue that I had. That was it. Yeah, and when you can I go when you move on, like, how do you look back on your time at Dundee? Like, is it just great memories? I, amazing memories, yeah. Amazing, you know, highs and lows. Um, well, more highs than lows, you know, coming through as the YTS and I played Youth Cup final. Um, I played Scottish Cup final. You know, we played in Europe. Um, I played loads of games, so it was you know coming through from the YTS to where I'd got to, you know, nothing but good memories for me. Yeah. yeah, and obviously, like when when you sign for Rangers, I would say you're probably thrown thrown in at the deep end straight away. Like the just talking through the prep for your debut, your debut was in the the old farm game. Just talking through the, from when you signed to when you were told you were going to play. Yeah, so I signed on the. On the first, I think the game was the third. So we got the deal done on the first because obviously the transfer window opened. Um, done the medical, signed. Trained on the second. Trained fine, no problem. Didn't feel my hamstring. 
got to obviously know all, all the boys or get, get to meet all the boys and, and train with the club, which was, again, an, an amazing occasion. Um, I knew some of the boys anyway, and I'd obviously played a lot against them a long, long yes. time, so um, I wasn't too fussed about that. And then Alex just, I think he told me the day before, so he's like, if you come through training today and you feel fine, then you're playing. And I was like, great. You know, as I say, I was, I was really confident as a player at that point, so I was yeah. ready for it, ready to go. Yeah, and what's what's that feeling like? Can I make, especially making your debut for Rangers, but making your debut in a game like that, like what's just butterflies? A little bit, but as I say, like at that point, I was you know I was proper confident. Like I was, I was ready for it. I was ready for that at big occasions. I was ready yeah. to get involved in stuff like that. Obviously, a little bit of nerves, but you know, I just I have always throughout my career always just try to cheat football as, as a game and, and what it is you know it's 11 v 11 treat it as if you're down the park playing with your mates yeah. you know, get that in your mindset but obviously that's difficult the higher the bigger the occasion but um, you know just try and treat it as much as like that um, so yeah I was I was I was feeling confident yeah and well are you worried like obviously you said you trained well the day before but are you 30 minutes in what happens just do you feel it just go you feel the hamstring just go yeah, yeah, I can remember. I can remember the actual like the whole movement. So I'd I'd made a run, burst into the box. I'm sure, I burst past Lenny, tried to go on the ball, and then got on the ball. But then obviously I sent a half and took the ball off us. But as I burst past Lenny, I just felt it just tighten up. And it's it's one of them. You know, do you stay on to make it worse, get to half time, or do you just come off? And I remember the doc saying to me before the game, um, you know, if you feel and just let me know. So I, just, I let him know. Let the decision, let them take the decision, and obviously they decided to take us off, which was obviously the right thing to do. But it was, uh, it was obviously gutting as well. And what was the atmosphere like? Just crazy, just a crazy atmosphere. Crazy, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, old farm games. You know, like from here to like five meters away, you try to call for the ball to your teammate. They can't hear you. It's that loud. You know, it's just like got like gesture because it's so loud. It's uh, ah, it's, it's something, some something to sort of. Treasure being able to be able to be say you've played in some of these games, you know. Mm-hmm. And after that, like obviously, like how big an effort was it to just get back fat, and what? Well, how long did it take you to get kind of like the fitness? Yeah, so it, it took because I'd never, I'd never really had a proper injury in my life, yeah. in my career. I didn't really know how to treat it. I mean, I had a physio at Dundee, but I was always saying I feel fine. So I had to like really sort of have mental, not mental strength, but sort of trust the physios at Rangers and let them sort of get me back fit. So normally it takes about, say, six weeks to come back from like a grade two hamstring. And we gave it seven weeks to make sure. Um, And then once I came back from that, I was like, I was proper fit. And I I felt great, you know, I was back playing and and getting strong, scored a couple of goals. Um, so it was it was the right thing to do, but because I'd never done that before, never had to do it, or never really been taught how to treat injuries, um, it was a learning curve for me as well. And it was it was tough because obviously it was at a new club and wanting to play and wanting to prove myself. But um, yeah, it just it never happened at that start. And what was Alec McLeish like with you when you obviously when you're getting back to fitness? How good a manager was he? Because obviously we felt how good he was, but obviously he was a hero. But what was he like with you in your time there? I was very understanding, you know. You know, I'm a coach now, and you want your players to be fit and understand. You know, it's difficult when they're not. Uh, you try to have empathy with them, he, like he did with me. He was great. Um, he'd have probably been a bit frustrated, obviously. I just came in and got injured, but I suppose that's football, and you it's experience you sort of deal with. Um, but yeah, now he was great with me. The, the whole medical staff, all the boys were were brilliant, and um, you know, thank them for their patience with me over the time when I was there because it was a lot of time I was in the gym. Yeah. And who were the kind of players in that team you thought were brilliant like the first season? Well, who did you play alongside that was just great? Well, both the De Boers. The Boer twins were yeah. unbelievable. Um, Shota was an amazing player. Mikel Arteta that first year was obviously an outstanding player. Um, did you go on well with Mikel? Like, was a, was a something. Uh, Mikel was quite closed. He was quite closed off. He was quite, well, let me say, he was quite quiet. He sort of kept himself himself. 
a fantastic player. Like you couldn't get the ball off him in training. He was very good in training. Um, but he wasn't one to that sort of mixed with myself or some of the other boys. But um, nice guy. But just yeah, he kept himself himself. Yeah. And do you think, well, obviously, when Barry Barry Ferguson leaves the season before, like, do you think you were signed as a as his kind of replacement? Like, does that make sense? I think it was definitely a part of the reason I would have been able to go there was because he left. Because right. if he was still there, I probably wouldn't have got that opportunity. Um, definitely, uh, I wouldn't say a replacement because different players, but. Um, yeah, I think if he was still there, I probably wouldn't have got the opportunity that I did. Right, okay. And, like, obviously, you come back into the team, but you pick up a serious knee injury against Indy. Like, did you just... It was Indy United, sorry. Like, what was going through your mind when that happened? Again, one of these things that... If if you've done your ACL or you know anyone that's done their ACL, it's um, agony for the first minute, and then it sort of eases off. And so I thought I was going to be fine, like, but the physio came on and says, right, you need to come off. I said, all right, okay, brilliant. Um, but not, not sort of knowing the severity of it. Yeah. You know, I thought I'd be back. I'd be back the week later. Um, but, yeah, as I say, I'd never had any serious injuries, so I didn't, I didn't know what to expect um, until we got the scan and it did show that, obviously, it, it, it went and I'd need an op. And as I say, I'd never done an op in my life at that point. So this was all new to me. Um, so yeah, I was obviously gotten totally gone. Yeah, I mean you're sitting in the stands as well. Like, a lot, of, a lot of kind of things are said. Like when, like obviously when players get injured, it's like are they going to come back the same player? Like do you do you worry about when, what the fans like think when you you get a serious injury? Like are you going to come back the same player? Like does that cross your mind? I think uh, it's human nature for that to cross your own mind. You know, I know. You're saying like what the fans think, but I think you think yourself, you know, will yeah. I get back to the point it was, you know, is I think that's human nature. Um but you've got to show, you know, resilience and the mindset to get back because that's that's what drives you back. And um because I'd never had any serious in- injuries, I always just thought, oh, I'll just we'll get it done, get the op and I'll, I'll get back. So I was always quite I'd say the word maybe blase about it, but certainly always confident I'd get back to to being a the player I was before. Yeah. Um, once I got the op then. And after you get the op, was it just kind of dark times, just trying to get fat and get back, back in the team? What was the kind of thoughts going through yeah. your mind? Ah, it's just, it's, it's tough, you know, because I'd signed for an amazing club with an amazing facility, um, amazing players to try and push myself on and win medals and trophies. Yeah. I just never really got the opportunity because of injury and that's frustrating. Hard to take. And, you know, I worked hard with the physios. I'm a, I was always a, a player that dedicated myself to my profession. So if the physio told me to do this, 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 and this, that's exactly what I would do. I would do exactly yeah. what he told me. So, like, in terms of rehabbing, I was always disciplined. But it doesn't make it any easier because you're basically, yeah, you are in the gym watching the boys every day. And you don't really get to feel part of it, the highs and the lows of the results every week. Yeah. You know, obviously, I'd try and be involved. I was with the boys in the dressing room and with the boys in the, you know, in the canteen and in in the gym and, and mixing with them, you still don't get to feel as much a part of it as what you would obviously if you're training and playing with them. Yeah, definitely. A player that comes in that season that you know you knew quite well was Nacho Novo. What's Nacho like as a character? Ah, oh, Nacho's an absolute. Um, pick my words carefully here. Um, he's an idiot. He's a lo- <laughs> lovable idiot. Nah, he's a great, he's a great lad, Nacho. He's he's full of life. He'd have like ten espressos pre-game. You know, he's one of them espresso in Red Bull. Just a a, a box of energy, um, a bundle of energy. Sorry, he's a he's a great guy, lovely yeah. guy, and great player as well. Great player. I mean, oh, a great player. I mean, it was funny, like, because when he joined Dundee, he was sort of towards my end. We didn't play that long together at Dundee, yeah. but. He was sort of in and out when he came. He came for Ray, Ray Roberts, I think it was, we signed him and he came in and yeah. he was in and out. And, you know, we had some, obviously, some great players. Caballero was still there. And so Nacho was in and out. And it wasn't toward until the end that he started to really show how good a player he was. And to be honest, he went even next level when he went to Rangers. I mean, yeah. he was amazing for Rangers and he scored some, you know, brilliant goals and um, really endeared himself to the fans, you know, really bought into the Rangers uh, culture. And, yeah. Uh, he did score some unbelievable goals for Rangers and fair play to him. And uh, he's a great lad, you know, a lovely, lovely little guy. 
Brilliant. And um, well, obviously, with, during this time, you, you missed that whole 2004-2005 season, but uh, McLeish makes a few signings. He brings back, obviously, Barry Ferguson, the likes of Alex Ray, and a blast for the past. I, I forgot all about this guy, Dragon Mladenovic. Remember him? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. But just yeah, like, see, when, see when the players like, come in and like, your position, do you worry about your place? Like, do you worry like, when you come back, are you going to like, get back to where you were? Like, do you worry about that? Of course, you know, a big club, big club like that, they demand success. I mean, it's it's pretty obvious that in that time out, they're going to they're gonna sign players in your position. Yeah. Whereas if it was a, maybe a different club, you know, maybe if I was still back at Dundee, you know, I'd Aye. be really confident to get my place back. Yeah. In the time I was out, they must have signed like five centre midfielders. Mm-hmm. Obviously, my position, I was thinking, right, wow, well, this is uh, it's going to be tough, going to be tough to get back in. But you've just got to try and believe in yourself and have confidence you will get back in. But yeah, we were signing some top players from my position and it was, it was tough to see them coming through the door and going straight into the team and then playing and enjoying it. Um, that's that's football. It's certainly at the top level, that's 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 the game. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. That was, it was probably one of the craziest seasons I'll ever remember, particularly the, the last day, obviously helicopter Sunday. I remember mm-hmm. I remember you you were there in the, the, the suit on, but just talk us through that yeah. day, like just talk us through the memories of that day. And is it kind of bittersweet because you're not in, like, you're not on the park? Like, uh, I mean, that one amazing for the club. It hurts hurts to be part yeah. part of it, but not really part of it. Yeah. But still amazing to see. Like you know, I'll never don't regret it because I got to see what it was like to win a championship. You yeah. know, the club and see the joy and the the passion that comes from that from within. You know, yeah. so I'm in a privileged position, even though I'm not playing. You know, still in a privileged position to be in that dressing room on the team bus after the game, you know, with the boys celebrating, um, especially with the dramatic fashion and, and how it sort of went. I mean, I remember we all went to the game. We're obviously just thinking, you know, oh, listen, let's just try and do our business and see what happens. Yeah. I wouldn't say we were confident in the slightest, you know, but we just had to make sure we got our job done. Um, and then you obviously you start hearing the rumours, you start hearing the, the roars, and you're just thinking, oh, wow, I mean, this is... This could actually happen, and and then obviously get down towards the end of the game. So all the boys that weren't playing, that were in the stand with the suits on, we all came down just to the tunnel beside the dressing room. Obviously, listening on the radio and and getting the updates, and and when we done it, it was just unbelievable to be on the pitch with the with the team and and help them celebrate and um, you know celebrated long into the night, even though didn't have anything to do with it, you know in terms of on the field. You know, I was still there every week um, in the dressing rooms and in the gym when the boys have had a bad result and try to G them up and then try to yeah. say, tell them my opinions of the game and, and they'll try to keep them going. And so you are kind of, you're still part of it, but you're not contributing. And that's, it is bittersweet in a way, but still something I would never, I would never change because it was amazing to see, see it from the inside. Mm-hmm. And the season after, like the 05 06, you, you come back to the team in February against Habs. Well, how good was that just to make your return and just, it was like 18 months, wasn't it? Just to how how long was the journey and how good was it to get back on the turf? Ah, it, was, it was amazing. I think um, I think in terms from when I first last started a game for Rangers to when I next started a game, it was two years, I think, roughly. Uh, yeah. Um, so, hell of a journey. You know, I picked up, so obviously I'm ACL and then I, done my, I had another injury, another operation on my right knee. So, um, yeah, a long, long time out. Delighted to get back, you know, worked really hard to get back and just buzzing to get back out and playing football, to be honest. It was, um, it was such a good feeling to be back on the pitch um, towards the end of that season and just delighted to get back out and try and start showing, you know, what it was all about. Mm-hmm. And obviously, like, uh, you play a lot with Barry. That, I think you play a lot because Barry was injured at the end of that season. Is that right? Yeah, I played a few yeah. games with Barry and then yeah. he'd had the hip injury towards the end, right towards the end. We played a few games together, and then he got he, he dropped out with a with a hip injury. He needed to get it done, and um, yeah. So I was I played uh, not many games, but I played a few games yeah. towards it. What's Barry like to play alongside? <laughs> uh, <laughs> demanding, um, yeah. No, really demanding. Yeah, obviously. I, I mean, I, I played against Barry when we were a youth team. He was obviously a Ranger. I was Dundee, so I've, I'd known Barry for years. Played with Scotland, obviously. A few times, and, and then obviously as a teammate at Rangers, and um, yeah, he's demanding. You know, he demand. He obviously came from an era where 
you know, there was um, multiple winners, um, and he'd been part of that dressing room and installed in him in terms of, you know, Rangers every week you got to win, and, and quite rightly. Yeah. And yeah, he can be demanding, but you know, he's, he he drives the team on, and um, I enjoyed playing with him because he was a, he was a top player. Mm-hmm. And the, can I, you get a consistent run towards the end of that season. Were you were you hopeful going into the next season that you would you would solidify your place and get going after such a kind of heartbreaking first two years? Yeah, I mean, I was gutted when the season finished because I was just back, you know, and I was yeah. just started to get in my stride. But obviously, the season ended. Um, I went away with Scotland, which was a total boost because you know I'd obviously missed so much football, so I would ended up playing in Japan in the Kieran Cup. Yeah, so I was going to, to get back in Scotland and in the Scotland fold with Walter and, and Koisty and, and Kenny was it was just amazing. It was a perfect end to the season for me because it was more football uh, and I was getting back in the in the Scotland fold because I'd done pretty well towards the end of the season. I had a couple of really good games and yeah, managed to get back in the Scotland st- in the setup. So that was that was that felt amazing. And yeah, I'm just confident going into the next season, just ready for it and ready for the challenge. Yeah, the Karen Cup, just touch on that. One of the very few players to win a trophy for Scotland. Just touch uh, on just yeah. touch on that kind of whole thing. It was amazing. It was like it's one of the best trips I've ever been on because it was like six days. You know, you play two games, we're all jet lagged all <laughs> over the place. Uh, managed to get a great result against Bulgaria. Boy D and Burkey got some goals. Um and then we managed to get the draw against Japan and playing against Japan and uh, you know, starting that game and, and playing in it. Just Unbelievable memories for me. I mean, it was quite funny. But, well, it wasn't funny, but we were actually coming. We were coming to Australia that year because obviously my wife saw you. Yeah. So we were coming back to Australia that year anyway. So we'd booked to go on flights and then got the call up. So my wife ended up flying back herself. Right. And then when Scotland team left to go back to Scotland from Japan, I went to Australia. So I went the other way. Yeah. Um, at holiday. So it was it was sort of on the way for me. So it was perfect. I was I was halfway here anyway. So I was. I was fine. I was, I was delighted. Um, no, it worked out. It worked out really well. Mm-hmm. And obviously, at like the end of that season, uh, Alan McLeish leaves. And but just before we touch on, obviously, who comes in after that? Just where we are. How good was Alan McLeish for you? And like, just were you sad to see him go, or did you? Can I know? His, can I time was coming coming to an end? I mean, obviously, he he signed me. He saw he saw something in me that he felt I was a good enough player to play for Rangers. So, you know, I'll always be indebted to him for for yeah. giving me that opportunity and that chance. Um, disappointing that I never really got to show him that when yeah. I was at the club, uh, just due to a few obviously injuries and, and stuff, which is it happens. It's football. Um, he was he done very well for Rangers. You know, won a lot of trophies. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I think it worked out well for him. But I think towards the end, I think. It sort of told him it was it was time to sort of move, and I think he was probably ready to move as well. And yeah. that's a sort of evolution in football that happens, and it sort of it was the right time to move on. And you know, I was glad to see him go, but like I say, I was just ready for the next challenge. Mm-hmm. And the next, the man that comes in is Paul Le Guin. When did he first hear his name? Um, well, there was rumours about they were talking about getting him. Um, and I think there was a few clubs going for him at the time. So to get to get him over the line was a massive coup at the time. Oh, you know, yeah. I mean, everyone was delighted. He's yeah, a massive name. He's a massive, massive name. Yeah. Leon done well with Leon. Three was it three league yeah. one there? Yeah, one league three three years in the trot. Done very well. Young coach, uh, progressive coach. Obviously, well sought after in Europe. And then you know we managed to get him. So I think at the time everyone looked at it as a as a huge coup and a, and a massive appointment, so we were we were happy, you know. Mm-hmm. And you, there are a few players have touched on that. So obviously, like I, I remember the times. But what was his pre-season like? Because this, a lot of players have said just how tough it was. It was tough. It was tough. It was different. Definitely different. I mean, there's some pre-seasons I've had with you know some Scottish managers um, that are just outrageously tough. Uh, my first ever pre-season with Duffy. And Buffet was torture. Um, so I sort of, after that, I was like, any, anyone threw at me, I thought I'd be able to handle. It was just different, different, different training, you know, different methods, you know, very sort of quiet and, you know, have to be really concentrated and just, just different, different culture. I'd seen it, you know, I'd had the Italians at, at Dundee, so yeah. I'd seen them different cultures and the way they train. So I, I was, 
adaptable and, and open to to trying it um, and getting just getting on with it. To be honest, as I say, I'm, I was pretty dedicated to my craft, so yeah, uh, I was happy just to crack on with it. Mm-hmm. And obviously, like straight away, like the players just excited when it came in, like. Yeah, I mean, everyone, like we say, it was, and we thought it was going to be, you know, an amazing appointment that would go on and, and push us to the next level. And um, everyone was was open to it and ready to, to do whatever he said at that point and to try and make it happen. And as, as the same as you do with any manager, it's the same with any manager, you know, you, you, you sort of have to buy into what they say and what yeah. they're doing, their, their methods, or else they'll not be there long. That's, that's football, Aye. you know, yeah. that's the way it is. Um, sometimes that's easier than others, and um, yeah, well, as I say, I was just ready, ready, and open minded to, to see what would happen. Mm-hmm. And do you, like, when do you first get into that with him? And like, does he tell you that he's kind of keen on you? Yeah, yeah, no, he was, he was open with all the players, and you know, he'd, he'd obviously know I'd been out for a, a while with injury, he'd, but he'd watched all the videos of the games, all the players, and yeah, he'd, again, a clean slate shout, you know. And, Try and work yourself into the team yeah. and that sort of thing. So yeah, I was, I was confident that if I'd done well enough, he'd have given me give me enough of game time. You know, if I'd done well enough. Mm-hmm. And he brings in a lot of players for France. Was little. Where did you think of the players he brought in? I thought some of them were very good, and I thought I thought some of them probably weren't up to par for Rangers. Who like? Um, who was up? Who, who well, do you think was good? Uh, Jeremy Clement was yeah, a very good. player. I thought he was amazing. Very good he was, yeah, very, he was a very very good. Player. And he was just young. He was yeah. really young at that point. And um, I just just think, wow, he he like he plays a lot older than what he what he seems, you know. Um, yeah, he was a he was a very good player. I liked him. Um, Julian Rodriguez came in, I think, as well. Right. He he was decent, but yeah, there was some came in. And, uh, as I say, I didn't think maybe he's up to the level of of what Rangers were. You yeah. Know? And we'd sort of discovered that over time, but. You know, when they come in, you give them an opportunity, and that's it. Mm-hmm. And the kind of only the only positive you would take for that season was the kind of run in UEFA Cup, and he makes you captain in a couple of games. Like, how big an honour was that to be the captain amazing, in the game? Yeah. yeah, amazing. I mean, a couple of games in pre-season, he sort of he made me sort of um, captain for it. You know, there was a couple of boys missing, I'd take over and, and be the captain, which is again amazing, especially after being out for so long. Yeah, I think he, he, just, he liked the way I worked in terms yeah. of really professional, down the line, get my work done, get the head down, get it done, um, mm-hmm. and lead by example sort of thing. Yeah. So I think that's what I liked about what I done, um, because I certainly wouldn't have been one of the best players. I mean, we had some some top top players, so um, it was more about leading by example. So really, really happy to be involved and obviously to be captain as well was was you know an added bonus. Mm-hmm. And when do you kind of get the feeling that this this isn't going to work out for like when like when's the first kind of England something's up? Well, re- results. You know, it's it's always results. You know, it's, yeah. it's up and down. Started well and then you know up and down and just, yeah, you just can't can't do that, Rangers. And you know, it's a club that demands wins every week. Yeah. Um, and there was there was a few results that were just not good enough. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's when it uh, was the St. Johnson one in the cup that always sticks out to me. Like that was the first time we heard something was up. So, like this was not going to yeah. work out. That was the first one I remember. Did you play in that game? Yeah, yeah, I can remember that team. I played that game. Yeah, yeah. He, he totally changed the team. You know, it was yeah. a lot of changes. You know, and I think I think that's maybe what he didn't realise the magnitude of every game at Rangers. Yeah. You know, I think he was quite happy to play anyone in the game. If we win, we win. If we lose, we lose. So who cares, sort of thing. No. Uh, we move on, sort of thing. And that, that, you just can't have that mentality, Rangers, because of the the club and what it demands of you. Um, so I think that and the Inverness result up in Inverness, where he was, you know, we were all fired up after the game. Barry, especially, you know, devastated with the result and the performance. But he was like, quite, no, it's okay, relax, it's fine. And we we're like, no. It's not really, you know, we had too many of these up and down ones, and um, yeah, just little things like that. It was, it was becoming pretty obvious that it was, it was going to be tough. Yeah, and see that Inverness game you touch on, like obviously you were, I don't, you were on the bench and didn't come on, is that right? Yeah. Correct. So when you when at the end of that game, I think it was two, they they scored in the last minute, didn't they? Inverness yeah, was two yeah, one, yeah. and when you get into the dressing room and that, obviously the thing with Barry is well known what happens, but 
do you think that when that he says that there's going to be a what happens after that, or was it just did Barry just let let rap, or was it did you think there's something? Was Barry was just frustrated. Just yeah, Barry was a typical player that had passion for his team that was really frustrated about how things were going, and we all were, you know. Yeah. But as Baz was captain, you know he's. He should have the authority to be able to say that and to articulate that to to the group. Yeah, but that's a different that's a different culture and a different mentality to what maybe Paul Le Guin had Paul and Le how they Le deal with players. Yeah, and that's you know that's the, the the disconnect and that's where maybe a couple of issues came from. But you know, for us as as players growing up in in Scotland, it was nothing nothing new for us. We were more than um, used to it and agreed with it you know there's a time to have a pop there's a time to have a pop for sure and did you think that at the end of that there was going to be a, an aftermath of obviously Barry getting dropped for the captain saying did you think that was did you think that was going to happen or were you stunned when that happened oh well we certainly wouldn't have we didn't think it was going to be as, as severe as that I don't think no way yeah. um you know I think uh, Paul Le Guin was very, you know, it's my way or or that's it. Yeah. Um, so we, you probably think, well, there might be something come of it. We definitely didn't think it would be as what it was, but um, you know, it wouldn't have surprised us if something came of it because that's the type of person he was. Yeah. And for from that game on to the model game, like just when do you first hear that Barry's been kicked, been dropped as captain, and you're going to be the new captain. When, when, just talk us through that kind of period. It would have been after training that day, uh, the day before the Motherwell game. So it had been after training, and then I think Barry had been told, taken in and told, and then sort of let the rest of the boys know and were stunned. And then I got called in, and then he made he said, "Oh, listen, I've told Barry he's not captain." and now you're captain, and I was like, right, okay. I was just thinking, okay. You know, I hadn't been playing, so I hadn't been yeah. playing regular. So very strange, strange choice, strange situation. Um, horrible being in the middle of. Mm -hmm. Proud to be captain, of course, but just a very, very strange situation. And was there, was there a bit of kind of problems with the dressing room? Like, were you, like, did you kind of feel that you were putting the firing line in... Was it was it a back in a dressing room uneasy towards you because of the position nah, you were none, putting? None, nothing. Not in the players. None, none. None towards me. No, nah, no. Nah. Because what what you may do, you know, if Aye. the manager does something and then makes you captain, I can do about it. Yeah. You know, I'm happy to, you know, try and do my best in that uh, role. But it's nothing, nothing. I didn't say make me captain. You know what I mean? It's yeah. the manager's telling made that decision. So the players were fine. Barry was fine. You know, I spoke to Barry about it. You know, I was totally fine. You know, he's just obviously, I know it's not to do with you. It's just, just, just what it is. Just try to do your best, sort of thing. So, um, but yeah, really, really strange time. Really sort of nervy time. And you know, I didn't really get nervous before many games, but that Motherwell game, oof, that's one of the worst in terms of nerves. Just yeah. because I knew I was going to come into the team because I was captain, mm -hmm. I hadn't been playing. I knew there was going to be absolute outrage and uproar because of fair game what had happened with Le Guin. Yeah. So like all that stuff like coupled into going in and you know try to concentrate on doing well in the game when I hadn't played for so long was was really I was nerve wracking the night before and, and the day of the game and delighted to just get the win. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd have been like the same as thousands of Rangers fans like thinking oh, why why did he make him captain because I hadn't been playing. And I totally, I totally understand. I took that. I would take that point, of course. So, as I say, just a very, very sort of weird situation. Yeah, and just to be hang on what I touch on, like when Boyd scores a penalty, you're standing right behind him, and you go. It obviously does the sex gesture to the fans, and yeah. you say some, you say something to him. I've tried. I've watched it back many times this week, and tried to work out what you're saying. I can't. Eat. I can't let me. Do you remember what you said to him when he done that thing? No idea what I said to him. It's probably. Like, probably thank God you scored the penalty because uh, all I was concentrating on that game was just it. getting the win. Yeah. I had, like, if we hadn't won that day, it would have been so much worse. So it was, uh, yeah, no, I was just concentrating on getting the win. So I don't know what he said. I don't know what I said to him. No idea. And did you, were, were the players, like, obviously, like, obviously it, did, it did turn out a, a bit of a kind of one side or the other. But do you, when you look back in that, do you think a lot of players took Barry's side? 
and like as opposed to Le Guin? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure, yeah. But, and quite but, rightly. And but do you think like obviously when obviously we know that like, I think it's is it the next day? Because I remember where I was I remember where I was when I heard the ah, game. Like day, wasn't it? It wasn't it? Aye. Long, yeah. it but, was, but he didn't say anything to you about he didn't explain to you why you were putting that position or anything like that. Like Nah, and that, and this is the this is the biggest issue I've got about it because if he'd called me after when he before he left and just says, Listen, sorry for putting you in that situation, but I didn't mean it to work out like that. Wish you all the best. And then I'd have been fine. You know what? Yeah. No problem. Mm-hmm. No problem. But he left. Never heard from him again. So I basically had to take all that crap for like 24 hours pre, 24 hours after, in the middle of a storm. And and then he just left. And I was thinking, that's a bit, that's a bit rough. You know, that's a bit, that's a bit harsh. Um, sort of hung me out to dry. Do you think uh, you for did, a and- time. I think it definitely, definitely hung you out to dry. But I just, I think that I can, uh, the respect. Obviously, you'd have a bit of respect for him as a manager. But does that just go out the window when he does that to you? Hundred percent, huh? Hundred percent. Gone. And, yeah, obviously yeah, the game. On you go. Just sorry for you saying. No, no, I was saying like, I, I got on really well with him in terms of very respectful between us. Um, as I say, if he'd, if he'd have called me after and explained a bit more. I'd have probably still had that same respect, but as soon yeah. as he didn't, and that's on me. So. Yeah, and obviously after that, when he leaves, uh, the, the game against Infermline in the Scottish Cup, like how, what was that game like? That was just horrible, wasn't it? Horrendous, I absolutely horrendous. It was, uh, you know, one of the games you, you want to do well and everything just goes wrong. Um, they could probably sniff blood. There was a lot of, you know, unrest within the within the club and, they just went for it and exposed us at the, in the defensive areas, and we weren't good enough on the day. And it was it was tough, really tough, tough, tough game. And um, yeah, it was just from start to finish, it was a, a tough day. Me and Nacho got left behind at the at the hotel even before the game. That shows you how really? bad a day it was. You know, before the game started, I would, you've got me who at that point was captain, not even on the bus, and me and Nacho were one of our top strikers. So it was just like that. It was a uh, it was a it was a bit of a shambles from start to finish that day. But obviously, like you'd worked with Walter Nally at Scotland. How excited were you when they were coming in? Yeah. I was delighted they were coming in now. Huh? The massive respect for Walter and obviously Coiste and Kenny working with them before and just the, getting the opportunity to work with them again was was something to look forward to. Um you know, I've got so much respect for Walter um and how he is as a man and as a manager. Loved working with him, loved working with Koisty and Kenny and it was uh, it was very enjoyable. Mm-hmm. And did Walter talk to you about what had happened with the previous week? Like did they sit you down and talk to you? About I just I think he just I can just remember him saying, Listen, um we're gonna put give take the captaincy back to and give it to Barry. And I thought, yeah, of course, hundred percent, no worries. Yeah. Um he says just get on, forget about it, move on and we'll get knuckled down and get yourself on the team. I said, No worries, no problem. And did you feel that already that man management? Well, obviously, Walter Smith probably the best man manager ever. But like, do you feel that that just the difference of Walter talking to you and Leguen talking to you was just so much better? Just again, just different cultures, and yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, Walter's just like one of those people that you just respect immediately because um, he earns it. Um, I had a great, great relationship with him personally, um, and just love working with him. So yeah, I was. Yeah, I was uh, sold straight away, and um, he was probably it was an amazing appointment at the time in terms yeah. of somebody to come in and galvanise the the club and, and the players that were there um, to steady the ship and get it back on the way it should be. And he done a fantastic job when he came back in. As you say, he completely changed the culture, and he brought in a few kind of Scottish players as well, just to kind of balance shape up the defence more than anything, which was badly needed. But like, what did you notice, like? Just what was he? What was the big differences you noticed, like from him compared to the Gwen? I think just the fact, just the fact he'd been there, done it, yeah. knows the pressures, knows the, knows the demands that are put on players, put the demands on the players, um, and get them to either sink or swim. And if they weren't, you know, able to to deal with that pressure of playing for a club like Rangers, and then you know it was time to move on. And it was a it's a way it has to be like that at a club like Rangers. They have to yeah. know 
players have to know the demands because it's huge, massive worldwide club, and you know you've got to be at your game all the time. And um, I think with his experience of being there before, there was it certainly helped to sort of install that into the, into the club again. And yeah, he changed the mentality straight away. Mm-hmm. And like when also your contract was coming up that season, but Walter, did Walter want to keep you? Yeah. Well, he. He did. He said, like, there was an offer there for another year, basically, if I wanted it. Yeah. He, he was happy, happy to, you know, for me to be part of the squad and try and fight my way. He says, you, you might not be playing every week. Obviously, we've got some very good players here, so you all have to fight for your position, um, which I obviously understand. But, you know, if I wanted to hang about and, and be part of his squad going into the next season, then um, I could have. Mm-hmm. I could have done that. But it wasn't for me. I just needed to get away. I'd been there for three and a half years, hadn't played much. You know, I needed to get back playing week to week. And at a club at Rangers at that point, it was always going to be tough. Um, mm-hmm. So it just, I just decided to, to make a clean break. Yeah, and then your, your last your last game, you obviously Klaus and Possel were leaving the same day. Like just, was it just nice to have that kind of send-off with them in the centre circle? Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> felt like a bit of an imposter can... Uh, next to these two guys, these two legends of the club, you know, I've, I was there. I was, as I say, always professional with the club and treated them, treated the club with respect and loved being there. But, you know, to be standing next to Klaus and, and Big Dado, who had, you know, won trophies and been absolute legends, it felt a bit strange. But obviously, very, very kind of the club to, to hold me in high enough regard to, to be able to do that. So I was appreciative of that, and you know, loved it. Um, but yeah, it was definitely time to move on. Mm-hmm. And do you just look back on your time at Ibrox just as unlucky and what could have been? Just frustrated, yeah, frustrated. Of frustrated, I didn't really get to enjoy it. You mm-hmm. know, it's, it's it should have been peak years of my career at a massive club, winning trophies. That's what it was. That's what it should have been. Yeah, um, but it did, didn't turn out like that. And you know, sometimes things don't turn out the way you expect and envisage, and it didn't. But you know, in saying that, frustration, yes, but um, obviously privileged as well to have played yeah. well. Brilliant. And obviously, like, you move on, you move on down to Cardiff. Were you excited to move down south? Like, was that where you wanted to be? Like, just wanted, did you want to give that a try? Yeah, I just wanted a bit of it's something fresh. You know, I'd been yeah. in, uh, obviously, Dundee and then Rangers, so played for about 10 years in the Scottish League and, you know, like you play every, each other four times every year. Aye. So, a lot of games against the same people, same um, clubs, same stadium. So, it was just, I just needed, and because I'd been injured, I just wanted a total fresh, clean break, get away, something new, something fresh, um, and then got the opportunity to go to Cardiff, which, you know, it turned out turned out to be a, a great move in the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dave Jones signed you for Cardiff. How, how good was he? Yeah. He was good, really good. At, he was very good at getting a, a club together, uh, sorry, a squad together and keeping everyone sort of happy. Um, really good at picking players and, you know, gelling a squad of really good players. And, you know, we had a great team and um, probably should have done a little bit better than what we've done. But, you know, we were always up there challenging and in a tough, tough league. Um, and, yeah, the four years I was there, he was a the manager. So, it was, yeah, it was enjoyable. Yeah, and who are the kind of good players in that team? Like, I want to touch on just Peter Whittingham, who you played with, sadly passed yeah. away not that long ago. But who, was, who were the kind of really good players in that team? Like, yeah, I mean, we had a we had a lot of good players. We had Roger Johnson, who went on and done really well. Um, I played in the middle with me and Steve McPhail, who yeah. was a top player, played with Leeds. You know, he was a very very good technical football player, and we 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 worked well together. And Ramsey was there the first year I was there. Joe Ledley, um, Jimmy Foy Hasselbank, Robbie Fowler, Travis Sinclair. That was all my first year. I mean, it was a top, top team. And then, you know, like you say, Peter Whittingham, who'd been at Villa as a kid, and then we had him on loan, and then he came and signed for us. And he was a, an unbelievable football player. Very, uh, He was a technician with the ball. Yeah. Could score from anywhere. Could, should definitely have played higher. But, yeah, he used to run games on his own. He was a great, great player. Brilliant. Uh, your first season, like obviously you'd a bat, you'd a couple of players, Scottish players down there with you, like Kevin McNaughton and Stephen Thompson. Like you obviously played with Stephen Thompson at Rangers. Was it good to have the kind of players there who were kind of pals of yours? Yeah, it was good because like me and Tomo, so Tomo had been at Dundee United as YTS, and, and then obviously at Dundee United and then Rangers. So 
sort of mirrored and mirrored his career in all the way. Sort of followed him. He went Rangers, now went Rangers. So he used to always say I was following him. Um, <laughs> I know, and Scotland twenty ones as well. So yeah. yeah, I knew Tom very well. Um, and Kev as well as from he's born in Dundee but played in Aberdeen. So mm-hmm. I'm the opposite. Um, so he knew Kev as well. So I think Dave always looked towards the Scottish leagues and used to pick up players from Scotland a lot. So that worked out for me. Um, and it was good to have the boys down there. But again, like I said, just a really good squad of, of really good top players and um, really enjoyable. Yeah, and how good was it just to be back fat? Like, just back fat and playing every week? That's, that was the biggest thing for me. You know, it was it was that first season that I played 55 games, which right. had, you know, 50 starts, you know, 50 full games and 55. So, plus 50. And that's like with run to the FA Cup final and the league, you know, and I hadn't managed to do that in three and a half years. So that was just for sort of validation for myself that I was back, you know, back to being week to week, a week to week football yeah. player and fit, fully fit um, and just loving and enjoying my football. Brilliant. And that, obviously the, the memories of that season will be the FA Cup, the run to the FA Cup final. Just talk us through the memories of the run and coming out, that coming out of was it when was it Wembley at that point, yeah? Yeah, it was Wembley, yeah. So we played the semi and the final at Wembley. So luckily we got to play there a couple of times. And um but we started in a non league, a non league team called Chase Town. So, you know, we went all the way from Chase Town. We were down one nil, not as for an own goal, and then Whittingham and Aaron Ramsey scored the goals. It was Aaron Ramsey's first card of goal. So um yeah, amazing memories. Then we beat we beat Wolves, we beat Middlesbrough, who were in the Premier League, we beat them away up there. Yeah. Um, and then we beat Barnsley. Um, so, yeah, we had, we had a great run, great run. And it was, uh, it was uh, like I say, it was my first year playing the FA Cup, FA Cup at all. So, to get to the final in the first year was, was you know, unthinkable. Mm-hmm. Played Portsmouth in the final. Uh, uh, Portsmouth won 1 0, but how, how good a team were they and just how good are uh, memories that game, playing in that game? Yeah, like like I sort of said, I didn't really used to get nervous for too many games. That was one. It was just like I think just the magnitude of the game. It was yeah. ninety two thousand people there. It was you know, it wasn't very much. It was to be honest, it was a rubbish game. Mm-hmm. Um, well, not a rubbish game, but it wasn't wasn't a very good game. It could have went either way. They won it from a mistake from um, from us from our goalkeeper on the day. Um, we had a couple of half chances. We played okay, but when you look back at the team we had, they had an unbelievable team. Like was, yeah incredible team when you look back on that um, so yeah we, we sort of we fought well enough but just couldn't get the, couldn't get the result mm-hmm. and obviously like the, the season after like obviously you finished 12th in the championship was it like a bit of disappointment in the league like the East End do so well in that first season for sure yeah no, for sure I mean we weren't fighting uh, well enough in the league and that's definitely what the club was aiming for the promotion to the Premier League so that was disappointing, but we had the FA Cup final as a sort of a, a buffer mm-hmm. for doing not so good in the league. But yeah, no, definitely not good enough in the league that year. First year. Yeah. In the following season, you play like 46 games again. You have a really good season. Uh, Ross McCormick and Chris Bort come. They, they come that season as well. What were they like? Like just Obviously, they'd have been there at Rangers with you. Like, how good was it? Yeah, you? yeah. So, yeah, no, I mean, I'm good mates with Burkey. Burkey's one of the best mates in football. So... Dave, I remember Dave asking me, he says, like, listen, there's a chance we can get Berkey from Rangers. And I was like, oh, yeah, how much? How much did they want from him? And I think he said, I'm sure he said nothing. He said nothing. I was like, what? <laughs> so, like, they're going to let him go on a free. And he's like, yeah, that's his mate. Get him. Mm-hmm. Go and get him. Because Berkey's a top, top player. Yeah, he was on Good, multiple injuries as well at Rangers. Like- Again, a few injuries, you know, just maybe one of them that needed a fresh break. And yeah. uh, it worked out well for him as well. And, you know, I, he done. He was amazing for Cardiff. Yeah. Um, and Roscoe, I knew as well, and he was sort of a young boy coming through at Rangers. But again, what a turn! What a signing he turned out to be. He was he was phenomenal for Cardiff. Mm-hmm. You just miss out in the playoffs, but would you say that was it was that was kind of the best time of your career, just playing every week and getting getting back to where you should be. Definitely, just playing every week. New stadiums, big clubs. You know, playing for Cardiff and a. An old stadium, Ninian Park, which was a proper football stadium, yeah. um, like old school, great atmospheres. And it was just, as I say, it's just that freshness and you just reinvigorates yourself. Um, and we just playing week to week and 
playing with good lads and just uh, yeah, very enjoyable. Yeah, and the season after you can you keep your place in the team, but how hard the championship as a league like torture, as torture, it? yeah, like off. Oh. It's grueling, you know, it's like Monday, eh, sorry, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Tuesday, every week nearly for the whole season. You know, 46 games, that's 10 more games than what they play in Aye. Scotland, I think. So, yeah, so yeah, it's, um, that, yeah. it's it's a lot, it's hard. And it's, you're up against big, strong boys, strong squads, big clubs, you know, big teams, everyone fighting to get that division. I mean... Anyone who gets out of the championship and you know gets on that back to uh, the next level, fair play. They deserve it because you're not. You've got to do very well to get through that season and, and come out on top because it's a tough, tough league. Yeah, you go back to Wembley in the playoff final, but uh, you didn't play. Like, was it hard to watch that for the stands? I was. I was tough, really tough because I. A few weeks before, I'd snapped a tendon in my ankle uh, playing against Crystal Palace and didn't think much of it. I thought it was, wasn't going to be too bad, but went for an It didn't, wasn't that sore. Went for an MRI on the Monday and the surgeon's like, like your, your season's over. And I was like, what? Like, I couldn't believe it. Like He says, no, you've snapped your tendon. You need to get it. You need an op to stitch it together to the bone. And I was like, I couldn't believe it because we're obviously in that, you know, on the way to Wembley again and in the playoffs. So I was... Hopeful we could get up and, and get over the line, but it just wasn't to be. And actually watching the watching the final from the from the sidelines uh, was was tough tough watch for the boys. You know, I was devastated for the club, mm-hmm. devastated for the fans, and devastated for myself. You know, <laughs> a chance to go to the Premier League. Um, not saying I would have played, but certainly to yeah. have that on your resume of of being promoted to the Premier League would have been would have been amazing. Definitely, that, that was the Charlie. That was Charlie Adam that scored. Was. Uh, were you kind yeah, of glad? Were you kind of glad for him as well that he, because he was in the same boat as you, like came through at Rangers, kind of mm. didn't do real, didn't do amazing at Rangers, but what did, were you glad to see him doing really well, like down south in his career? I delighted to see him doing really well. He's a top player, top guy. Was was not happy on that day with him, but nice. uh, obviously <laughs> the, the goal. But um, no, nah, he's Charles. A good, he's a really talented football player and. And he's done very well in his career, and, and quite rightly. But yeah, I was devastated on the day. Um, but you know, it is what it is, and it wasn't. It's probably the lowest, one of the lowest. I think you can be after a, a playoff final. You know, doing so well for the season, but then not getting over the line to go to mm-hmm. the Premier League, and the the feeling of um, how distraught you are after that game is is a real low. Um, mm-hmm. And I was just delighted to get away on holiday after it, to be honest, and yeah. try and forget about it for a bit. And the fight, your final season, uh, Carlos signed Craig Bellamy. Like, yeah, any kind of Craig Bellamy stories? Uh, Bellers was like just I couldn't believe. Well, I sort of heard rumours of how good a professional he was. He was, he was unbelievable. He employed his own, you know, um, his own physio to make sure he was fit for games. He was amazing, amazing player. It's quite similar to Kitspire actually in terms of like could be really like chilled and then just something would just go and he would just go on you know totally erupt um i think he found it hard because the players he was playing with were nowhere near the standard of players he'd been playing with and right. and where he was at he was a frighteningly good player yeah um did you see that itself when he was at Celtic as well for that half season like remember the game oh, yeah, I mean, it, was, it, it was amazing yeah. Very, very good when he'd done. Yeah, I thought he played well for Celtic. I thought he'd done well. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, so, yeah, no, I knew what, he was obviously a top player, the clubs he'd been at and what he'd done already. Um, but, yeah, I think he was, uh, you know, one of the guys that sometimes I felt, oh, you know what, he's a great guy. I'm getting on really well with him. And the next, mm-hmm. I'm just thinking, nah, he's a bit, he's a bit strange. I'm not really sure yeah. about him. <laughs> but, but you can just sort of flip. You can just sort of flip quite quickly. Yeah. Um, but I got, I, got on, I got on well with him. Um, and he was obviously a top yeah, and that like kind of last season, you kind of fall out a favour a wee bit. You kind of link with Leeds. Like, did you were you kind of keen to leave at the end of the season? Did you just feel your kind of time was up there? Yeah, I should have. I should have left the season before because I think Dave Jones had made it not blatantly clear, but he made it clear that I probably wouldn't play as much as what I had the three previous seasons because yeah. he was going to get other players in and, and really have a push for the for the league. That, the Premier League and get a few loan players in from the Premier League down to the Championship. So 
he didn't say it in as many words, but um, he says like, you know, it's going to be tough, not just for me, but for other players as well. But so I actually spoke to the Leeds manager at the time, um, it was Simon Grayson at the time. Right. Okay. And they were wanting to take, they were wanting to take me on loan. See the issue, and this is what people won't understand or don't see. My kids had just been born. Right. So okay. my, my our twins had just been born. So our twins were young. My wife's Aussie. She's in Cardiff on her own with right. our twins. So we were going to have to move everything up to Leeds yeah. because she wouldn't be able to look after the twins on her own. Aye. So you know, we need both of us there to look after them. Aye. Now, to do that, we'd have had to sell up our house and move to Leeds, but it was only a loan deal. If yeah. Leeds had obviously wanted to take me permanent, I'd have been there in a shop. Aye. We weren't. It was a loan deal to start with, so it's sort of... It went against it in terms of I just can't do it for my family at the moment. I just have family takes priority, unfortunately. Yeah, definitely, yeah. My career had to take a step back for that year, which was tough, but it's what it is. And I would obviously never change that decision. But um, I was just gutted I never got the chance to play for Leeds because I was interested there. Yeah. But, and how do you look back on your time at Cardiff? Amazing. Amazing. You know, our kids were born in Wales. I had four amazing years there that were made loads of friends. We played some top games, played against some top players, got to see a new new leagues, um, obviously FA Cups, playing against Premier League teams. Just a great, great decision. It, it worked out. It was a perfect decision for me. Brilliant. And at the end of that season, you're kind of linked with Leeds and uh, you're linked to come back to your boyhood club, Aberdeen, but you choose Dundee under Barry Smith. Was, that, was Barry Smith a kind of swinger for that, like your old captain? Yeah, so what had happened was I was close to going to Aberdeen in the summer, but then before I had spoken to Craig Brown, he had made a couple of offers to some players and the players had taken the offer, so there was no budget left. Yeah. He, basically, he basically says, listen, I want you, but I've no budget left unless I get more budget. Yeah. So that sort of kiboshed that one. And then I wasn't playing, so I'd been about two months maybe not playing. And then Barry was at Dundee and he says, mate, just come back up, sign a short-term deal, get back playing get back enjoying it and, and then see what happens from there. And again, one of the best decisions I made because I played 12 games, scored four goals, was absolutely loving playing for Barry. We're playing an attractive brand of football back with a you know, familiar sort of place. And it was, it was again, really enjoyable three months there. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. It sounds like it was a great time. You extended a deal and Barber didn't come in for you again. But, and we delighted to kind of finally have the chance to play for Aberdeen. Yeah, finally to get the chance to play for them. It had been happening. It had been close a few times. I had the sort of gentleman's agreement with Baz that, you know, if, if a team in the Premier League came in for me, that, you know, and if I wanted to go, I could go for nothing. Mm-hmm. Because that was the only reason I signed the extension. You know, I was yeah. keen. I would have stayed at Dundee if it wasn't sort of maybe Aberdeen, but yeah. because it was Aberdeen, um, it was perfect for me. Back home, we got to take our. You got to, got to take my young family home to my hometown, mm-hmm. um, and and play for the club that I supported as a kid. So, you know, it was, it was a no-brainer. I was going all day long. You know, I was always going to go. So, um, delighted to get the chance to play for them. But I mean, and obviously the management team then was Craig Brown and Archie Knox. What were they like? They were great, old school, um, funny. You know, demand a lot of respect. Um, they'd obviously coach thousands of players. Mm-hmm. Could tell you stories all day long. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed working with obviously Craig. I had a connection with because he gave him a debut. Yeah. Um, it, but yeah, no, I really, really enjoyed working with him as a pair. Mm-hmm. And who was kind of good to play alongside in that team? Oh, we had some really good players. So we had uh, obviously Johnny. Johnny Hayes was there, and them again. Um, Ryan Fraser was there for a little bit before he moved off. Mm-hmm. I played in the middle of the park mostly um, with Jacko. Ryan Jack's a top, top player. Yeah, you know, he was a young player, but he, again, one that played well beyond his years. And Could you see that then, that he would, be, he would go on to do what he's done? Yeah. I could see. I thought as soon as I seen him and how comfortable he was in the ball and how well he protected it and moved the ball and his, his awareness and reading of the game, I thought, yeah, no, he's, he's got something for sure. I can remember even when I got released, I said to, so Dell and Tony Dock came in. So Tony Dock, I've known for years, Tony Dock, and 
I said to him, like, mate, whatever you do, try and keep a hold of Jacko because he's a top, top player because, yeah. you know, I was an older, experienced pro and he was next to me. I could see how good he was. I loved playing with him. He's an intelligent player um, and it's good to, to see him go on and do well. Brilliant. Uh, you, you're one of the main men in that team. Like, you do really well with finish ninth, but uh, Derek McAnish takes over. Yeah. Did Derek McAnish not fancy you or was there kind of more to it? Um... So I'd, it's funny, I obviously Dell's a little bit older than me, but not that much older. I played against Dell, you know, I'd been in and around Dell lots. Um, and when I went to speak to him at the end of that season, so I had I had been doing well and I'd been holding my own, but I was older. Yeah. I'd have been, you know, I'd have been, what, 34, 35 at that point. Yeah. So what he basically said was, listen, it's, this is one of the toughest I've got to do because I know you, but I'm going to, I'm looking to change things here, get younger players in um, and really put my own stamp on the squad. And I says, well, listen, no problem. I totally understand it. I get it. As hard as it was for me to leave and my mum was devastated because, you know, she thought I was going to, you know, leave to go to Australia straight away. Yeah. Um, you know, I was totally comfortable with it. And I said, Del, don't be silly, mate. Totally understand where you're coming from. Um, you know, I wish you guys all the best, and obviously he's went on done done very well for them. Yeah, and even then, like, did you always was up the plan always to move to Australia when your playing career was up? Yeah, always the plan. So that's been the plan since I met my wife. So I've been with my wife for you know eighteen years now. So it's every every pre season, every close season, we would, I would fly back to Australia. Right. So I started coming to Australia in two thousand and two. So it was always the plan that when I finished playing professionally that we were going to come here. My wife had been in the UK for 12 years um, and we had the young family and it was obviously a good place for the kids to grow up. So, yeah, it was always a plan to move. Brilliant. And your final spell at Dundee, John Brown, signed you and appoints you captain. Like, was it an honour just to be the Dundee captain? And you can yeah, I mean, there was thoughts about leaving and once Aberdeen was up and, and moving on, but then I think... Bomber like, called me like the day, even either the day I got released or like a couple of hours after I got released or the next day. So he must have, I obviously I maybe spoke to some of my mates in the day and they must have told him or I don't know how it all happened, but it word got around quite quickly and he called me and he says, listen, come and meet me and Scott Gardner, the, the chairman, we'll meet you um, and we'll have a chat with you. And I was like, ah, okay, no problem. Obviously I'll give you respect of 100%. Yeah. I'll come and chat to you. And he says, listen, what we want to do is we want to make you captain, club captain. Plus, I want you to coach the reserves because you knew I was coaching. So you knew right. I had like aspirations for coaching. So, um, and I didn't have to. I didn't have to move. So I, you know, I could still stay in Aberdeen where I was staying and just commute. So, all that, I sort of said to my missus, like it's it's it's, not, it's one more year. I get to you know get my foot in the door in terms of coaching. Yeah. Plus, it's my, plus it's my club and it's club captain. I mean, what's one more year going to change for the rest of our life? Sort of Aye. thing. So. It was just like, yeah, hundred percent. Let's do it. You know, I knew he was putting together a squad to, to go and challenge, um, and and yeah, I said, yeah, let's 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 do it. I'd love to come back. Brilliant. And you do do well. Like uh, Paul Hartley takes over. Like he, you'd obviously played with him, didn't you? Did you play? Yeah, with yeah, him? Played got on that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What was he like? Was he a good manager? He was good. He was good with me. Like very good with me in terms of giving me respect for you know like being there before, being captain and also myself knowing my own body. You know, I didn't do all the, I'd done all the training, but if there was any running, I would just dip in and dip out and I could look after myself in terms of what I'd done. Yeah. Some of what can have done with himself as he got older. Aye. You know, look after yourself, you know your body. So he always gave me the respect and, and yeah, a good relationship with him. Um, he came in and, you know, got all, he brought his own fitness guy, done a lot of like a mini pre-season and I didn't have to do it, which I was very thankful for um, at that stage of my career. So yeah, no, I, I got on, I got on well with them. Yeah, brilliant. And uh, obviously, that, that's your last season. You a fit and end. You win the league and you lift the trophy, and you can kind of make yeah. that was you made three hundred appearances for Dundee. Was it just an honour just to lift the trophy and kind of close oh, your playing career there? That was ideal. You know, I had an, I had another year because we won one promotion. That was part of my deal. You get an extra year. But I just, I'd made the decision that day, like, it's not going to get much better. You know, I got presented with a trophy before the game for making 300 appearances for the club. We win, win the game, win promotion on the last day in a dramatic, another dramatic sort of um, 
league championship. Um, and I was 36, maybe 35 at that point, the way to be 36. So I was just thinking, listen, it's, it's not going to get much better than that. You know, I can right. go back to the Premier League, but I'd been in the Premier League for years, so yeah. it wasn't going to really prove anything. So I let the young one get on with it, um, and I'll bow out respectfully and, you know, make my own decision about when I retire. So it was probably one of the best things I've done. Brilliant. And how do you look back in your playing career? Like, what was it? How good um, was it? Obviously, really proud to have made over like 500 appearances. That's one thing I look back on, really, you know, chuffed to have done that. Um, delighted to get the trophy on the last day, which was my only winning trophy. You know, I'd been in a couple of finals and runners up, but, you know, to get a winner's medal on the last day, the last game was, you know, I think. There was satisfaction there of feeling that I deserved it. So um, to finally do it, it was great. Um, you know, I would say I loved it. I wouldn't turn, wouldn't change anything. The injuries, part and parcel. But um, you know, it's, that's football and the life of a of, a, of an athlete and uh, the challenges that come with it. But you know, I wouldn't change much about my career apart from you know maybe you know doing playing higher. Could have played higher, higher level. I probably. Probably, but you know, you need a bit of luck as well. But you know, I, to say, I wouldn't change too much. I've not got too much regrets. I mean, and obviously, the, you moved to Australia. Like, were you, what's the kind of differences in culture between like Scotland and Australia? Like, what did you notice when you moved? Oh, it's a massive change in difference in culture, especially football. Um, whereas, you know, back in the UK, back on, you know, football, 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 and it's all over the papers and the radio and yeah. all that. It's, it's the opposite here, you know, like. If you buy a newspaper in the city, uh, you're lucky if you've got one column on football about 20 really? pages deep. So you've got all the, the rugby league and yeah. you know, volleyball and swimming will come before football. It's, really? uh, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. But then it's the most participated sport in, in Australia. So That's it. it's, you know, everyone loves it. Yeah. Just not in the mainstream yet. Uh, they're obviously trying to build up their league, which is good. Um, but everyone loves football here, but it's 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 just trying to get get it more in the mainstream media um, yeah. to get exposure. But it's uh, yeah, it's um, different because we play March to September, so it's play winter months over here. It's quite short seasons, twenty two games. Um, so yeah, it's yeah a lot different, a lot different. And the family really enjoy it as well. Yeah, so obviously my wife being from here, she's she's back home and close to her mum, which is great. Um, both my kids, both the twins, play football. Uh, they're involved in um, lower, the younger ages football. Both love it. So it's yeah, you, there's there's so much opportunities here in terms of sport and what you want to do and, and opportunities within within the countries. And it's a it's a young country that's you know, obviously still trying to um, establish itself in football, but hopefully it can do that you know in, in the next little while. Mm -hmm. And you've been doing a bit of coaching as well. Do you enjoy that? And is that are you planning to kind of do that? For the kind of rest of, until you can't basically. Yeah, no, I love it. I, I love it. You know, I started doing Aberdeen. I started doing my badges when I was in Cardiff. I done my B license in Cardiff when I was there, and then I done my license in Scotland at Largs, and then was involved with Aberdeen younger age groups like the 16s and 17s. A couple of training nights. I done the reserves at Dundee before I left, and then since I've came here, I've been assistant manager or, or manager for the last six years. So. Um, really enjoy that side of it, you know, trying to get, try to make the, give the players confidence and then push them on. Mm -hmm. um, enjoy that side of things. It's it's really, uh, that's what I enjoy is trying to give them confidence and see them improving. That's yeah. what I really like to do. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's great fun. And just a, a, one f kind of wee hang, like, do you still keep, keep tabs in Scottish football? Like, what's your kind of thoughts on the like, kind of season so far? What if you do? Yeah, no, listen, I'm I'm all over Scottish football still, all over the UK football, Scotland football, of course. You know, I've got the, the apps here. I can watch it live on my, on my laptop or on the TV. And um, obviously with social media and Twitter and across everything. So, yeah, um, it's, yeah, it's obviously Rangers have started pretty well. Celtic are having a little bit of a tough time at the moment. Um, but it's, it's, I'm sure it'll go down to the wire again. It's definitely going to be one of them seasons. Brilliant. Are you alright closing with some quite fire questions? Of course. Brilliant. Out of your whole career, who would you say was the best player you ever played with? Kanija. Kanija. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, best player you played against? 
Um, two guys, when he was at Rangers, probably, or I mean, probably uh, Luka Modric for Croatia when he was playing for Scotland. Brilliant. Yeah, he was, he was Unbelievable. Couldn't get near them. Brilliant. <laughs> Could not get near them. <laughs> Different level. Oh, is it? Uh, interesting fact about yourself. Um, hmm. Question. Um, well, since since retiring from football, I've got involved in technology. So I run a a small technology consulting firm. Um, yeah, I do. Yeah. So yeah, since I moved here, I've sort of I've moved into I was in technology recruitment to start with, and now run a small consultancy on within tech. So I've been learning a bit of digital product management and digital product design. So certainly miles away from football, um, but certainly enjoyable. Brilliant. That's great. Uh, favorite film and TV show? Oh, favorite film. Good question. I think favorite film. One of our favorite film could be probably Donny Brasco. Right. Okay. Love mafia movies. Yeah. Um, the fact it's a true story. Love all that sort of stuff. Um, favorite TV show. Oof. Been watching Succession recently on HBO. I don't know if you've right, seen okay. that one yet. It's it's very good. Um, loved a bit of Dexter back in the day. Yeah. Only Fools and Horses, all the old school ones. Um, still can game, it, probably. Still can games, probably. Can't beat the, can the old comedy. Uh, yeah. Favourite away ground you played that in your whole career? Mm. Probably the Emirates. I was lucky enough to play at the Emirates. Um, and that was that was phenomenal. Like, it was like pitch was like a bowling green, um, yeah. you know, some setup, amazing setup. Like it was like you wouldn't even think it was grass, you'd think it was fake because it was that good. Brilliant. Uh, best friend in football? I've got a couple, so I'm still really close with Berkey. Uh, Berkey, I'm still really close with David Marshall um, from our time at Cardiff, uh, yeah. Lee Mayer, who I started at Dundee. With. Um, and Mark Robertson, who's my brother-in-law, who's involved in football, but um, we played together at Dundee. So, yeah, we've got a few mates, definitely. Brilliant. And finally, the best manager you played under? Oof. Tough one. Um, I liked them all for different reasons. I'd probably, I'd probably say Duff, just because he managed me a few times and he had such a big impact on me and gave me the chance. I'd probably say Duff. Brilliant. Gavin, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. I can't thank you enough for joining me. It's been really, really great to talk to you about your career. No, no problem at all. No Thanks problem. very much, Gavin. Cheers. Thanks, buddy. Cheers.